Today, live from War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock, Arkansas, it's Lobo football. The University of New Mexico Lobos face the University of Arkansas Razorbacks. Lobo football on Channel 14 is brought to you in part by Coors, the beer with a difference worth tasting. Coors is the one. Coors Light, the silver bullet. There's no slowing down with a silver bullet. Ajax Mobile Home, they've got the spirit and it shows. Safeway, America's favorite food store. And by American Toyota, New Mexico's number one Toyota dealership. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock, Arkansas, where this afternoon the University of New Mexico Lobos square off with the Liberty Bowl-bound Arkansas Razorbacks. These two collegiate football teams are meeting for just the second time in the two institutions' history of college football. The last time they met was in 1983 here in Little Rock, and the Razorbacks prevailed, shutting out New Mexico 17 to nothing. I'm Jim Lawwell, along with Gary Ness. And Gary, when you talk about Arkansas, you talk about their new head coach, well, reasonably new head coach, Ken Hatfield. Ken Hatfield came here after a very successful stint at the Air Force Academy and immediately installed the wishbone offense, which was new for them. And they haven't had as much success with it this year because Greg Thomas, number eight, their outstanding quarterback, has been injured off and on. We understand that Greg may not be suited out for the game this afternoon. But they still have lots of fire, firepower in that wishbone. When you talk about the defense of the Razorbacks, the nose guard, Tony Cherico, he's kind of unique, marches to the beat of a different drummer, but an outstanding football player. Many consider him to be the best nose tackle in the United States. He uh, does it on his quickness and agility, not so much overpowering size. He was a high school championship wrestler. And he is unique. He spurns weightlifting as, as a way to develop strength. Uh, and he lived, one of his roommates is a six-foot boa constrictor. So, yeah, he does march to a different drummer. It's going to be cold. It's going to be windy. Uh, will that affect the football game? It might. Uh, if you're a passing team like the Lobos, sure, it might. It might make it more difficult for the defense to cover your receivers. On the other hand, you lose a little sensitivity in your hands when they get cold and the ball gets slippery. So it, it could work to your disadvantage as well. All right, this should be fun as the University of New Mexico wraps up their 1987 football season. They're winless in 10 tries. Arkansas, seven up and three down coming into the contest. We'll be back with the kickoff in just a moment. Back at War Memorial Stadium, Jim Lawwell along with Gary Ness. Right now, they're introducing the seniors for the University of Arkansas. And Arkansas enjoys such a fantastic football tradition here in Little Rock as well as in Fayetteville, the home of the Razorbacks. Well, they play half of their games here and half of the games at Fayetteville. Both stadiums hold about 53,000 people. Both are generally full. Uh, in Little Rock, they, some, uh, they play night games. At Fayetteville, they don't. We see some of the Arkansas memorabilia right there. You know, Arkansas hasn't changed their uniforms as long as I can remember. I'm sure 25 years, and uh, they have a lot of tradition here, Jim. Well, you mean change the look of their uniforms. They aren't the same ones they were 30 years ago, and I'm sure they've laundered them a number of times. So let's hope so. Or perhaps that's the secret to the way they move the football. We're going we're gonna to see the flex bone. Now, uh, people talk about the wish bone, but basically Arkansas this year is running the flex bone. And it looks a lot like the run and shoot that New Mexico ran a year ago. Yes, indeed. The films that we saw, they put two wing backs out wide, and they like to sprint out, and they fake the fullback dive, just like uh, it did in New Mexico's offense of the two previous seasons. You can see on the far sideline the cheerleaders putting on their coats. It's pretty nippy here today in Arkansas. It should be interesting to see if the weather will be a factor. We covered that in the stand-up. Another factor in the football game will probably be the size of Arkansas. Their offensive line averages 294 pounds across the front, and the Lobos can only go five deep on their defensive front. That tells us Arkansas is going to run and run and run some more. Well, imagine yourself John Bell. Here's a true freshman out of Del Norte High School. And the, the front five on the offense, from tackle, guard, center, guard, and back to tackle, averaged 294 pounds. And here you are, a freshman, and you got to go against them. That's quite a challenge. 
Kendall Trainer will kick the football off for the University of Arkansas. The Lobos will receive and move the football from left to right on your television screen. Glad to have you with us tonight. Been a busy morning of travel coming in from New York. Lobos beaten by Seton Hall last night in basketball in the NIT semifinals. They'll play the consolation game against Iowa State tonight, and that NIT final will be seen here on KGSW TV 14. Deep for New Mexico, Terrence Mathis and Shane Hall to return the kickoff. We're just about ready to get it underway here. This is the last game of the season for New Mexico and will be the second to last game for Arkansas. Their last home game, but not their final game. They go to Hawaii and then to the Liberty Bowl. They've basically got two bowl games up and coming. The trip to Honolulu, then to the Liberty Bowl to play Georgia who is leading Georgia Tech this afternoon in their finale. Here's the kickoff. Shane Hall will take it around the three and bring it up the field to the 15, and he's slammed out at the 19-yard line. Good coverage by the Razorbacks. The Lobos start at their own 19. Now, it'll be interesting to see if the Lobos go right to their pass offense because the thorn in the side of the defense has been Arkansas's pass defense this year. There are the skill people for New Mexico on offense. Owens Mathis, the wide receivers, Hall Howard, the running backs, Garrison at the throttle. Of course, Barry could break a New Mexico record for total offense this afternoon. There's the offensive line. Garrison will throw on first down in the flat. Mathis takes it and is hit for a loss. Might have got back of the line of scrimmage. Boy, streaking in heavily with the Razorbacks that time as Otis Lloyd put quite a hit on Terrence Mathis. Now, this is how the Razorbacks line up defensively. They're not as big on defense as they are on offense. They go more for quickness. But oh, so quick. And number 70, David Shell. Some Albuquerque people may recognize him. Former tackle for Del Norte High School. And there's the linebacking core. They're very good. And the defensive backs. Garrison straight back on second down. Dumps it off. John Duff will get to the 24. That'll be it. Should be about third and five for New Mexico. Eric Whited came in and made the tackle on John Duff. Watch here now, there's number 64, Tony Cherico, taking an outside rush, but really doesn't get there. No real pressure on Barry. Dumped it off to John Depp, but with two completions, they've netted only five yards. Third down and five for New Mexico. Garrison to throw it downfield, complete. Should be a first and 10 for New Mexico. Mathis with the catch. Lobos went downfield that time, and it paid some dividends. Well, when you've got a receiver like number 15, Terrence Mathis there, with the speed that he has and the elusiveness, you'd like to get him downfield. If he catches the ball over the middle, sure, he may gain some yardage for you, but he has to get by both linebackers and secondary coverage then. In this case, he just worked on the cornerback one-on-one. -on -one. First and 10 for the Lobos, outside their 36-yard line. On the hash mark to the top of your screen, Owens comes to the bottom of your screen, the little running play, and Shane Hall bounces out for about six yards. Good job by Shane that time. Kerry Owens finally dropped him. Nice surge by the offensive line there. This, this is a, a draw play. Barry will carry the ball back to the running back. Shane Hall there in the lead block by Scott Howard, 26, on 57, the linebacker. Excellent. Second down. We'll call it four yards to go for the Lobos operating out of the shotgun. The Garrison to pass it, dumps it off to Mathis, who's hit, fumbles, and the Razorbacks have it, but they're going to call it an incomplete pass. Eric Bradford came in to cover very quickly, but apparently Mathis never really did have the football in his possession. Blitz was coming. Linebackers were coming. There was a seven-man rush. Now watch all the red shirts coming in on Ferry Garrison to see from the end zone camera. Cherico goes left, 57. All right, now see it right in front. Normally that's good against a, a, uh, a blitz, but this time it was covered. Third down and four. Garrison to pass. Incomplete to Shane Hall, and then almost picked off by Eric Bradford, who got a carom off the left hand of Shane Hall. And the Lobos will have to punt it away to Arkansas. 12.45 to go. First quarter just underway with no score. Now 
Well, maybe the Lobos won't punt here. Garrison remains in the football game. Either that or they're waiting. No, they are. It, it appears as though they're going to go for it on fourth. Arkansas has taken a timeout. As it looks like the Lobos will go on fourth down, they certainly have nothing to lose by doing that. We'll be back in just a moment. 12.45 remaining in the first quarter. Basically just underway. They're a part of the many Arkansas fans here. No score. Back at War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock, Arkansas. Jim Lawwell along with Gary Ness. There's Mike Shepard, the Lobo head football coach in his 11th and final game. And now Arkansas wasted the timeout. The Lobos will punt as they switch units. And here's Albrecht to power it. Arkansas let it roll out of bounds. Good punt by Albrecht around the 15-yard line. Ben Floor was back there, but alertly just let the football care him out of bounds, and Arkansas will start deep in their own territory. We talked about the offense of Arkansas. There are the skilled people. They have some excellent running backs. Horton's a good receiver. He doesn't get the ball much. Albrecht's punt netted 43 yards. Now the line is huge just unbelievably large. Chris Beckett, number 65, is in his second year in law school, by the way. And a third generation Arkansas Razorback football player. Out of the flex bone, Arkansas first and 10. Grovey's the quarterback, he fumbles the snap. Lobo is scrambling for it, but the Razorbacks got it back. Sammy Van Dyke recovered the fumble for Arkansas, so they start shakily. Quinn Grovey, not the usual starting quarterback. Let's see, Ed comes out from under center and without the ball. It's cold, and those things happen on days like this. Lobo's missed an opportunity there. Orlando Lavelle, Brian McKay, Musa Kaniki. Yeah, they don't have a lot in that uh, defensive line on the bench. Only two more left. Orison Allen, Martinez, and Edwards at the linebackers. Although Martinez, a question mark, and Clueless Johnson, McDonald, and the rest of them in the secondary. Pass downfield complete. Making the catch was Derek Russell. So Groby went right to work, and Russell is very close to a first and ten. And Derek Russell, as a true freshman, has great speed. He ran a 13 400 high, hurt, meters high hurdles, second best ever by a high school track sprinter so he has the great speed there he is number two I can tell you got here a couple of days early you're really prepared <laughs> this time Van Dyke fumbles as he dives in they'll say he's down the ground cannot cause a fumble and Arkansas gets what they needed it'll be first and ten for the Razorbacks at their 26 yard line for all that heft in the offensive front, the Lobos uh, held that pretty close, pretty tight there. They, all, they only needed a yard for the first and picked it up. As there you see Coach Ken Hatfield, who's been under some criticism. Well, you're 7-3 and three in New Mexico. They'll love you. You're 7-3 and three at Arkansas. They're not so happy. Groby on the option, pitches it to Joe Johnson, look at him go, and he's near another first down, around the 35-yard line, they'll mark it just outside the 35. Brett Eber came over to drive Johnson out of bounds, just shy of a Razorback first and 10. From his safety spot, Brett had to make the tackle. Now watch as the pitch is made, normally defenses like to force in the triple option for you to make the pitch, there it is. But see, no one is at the line of scrimmage to take the pitch man. Brett Heber has to come from his safety spot. That's too far away. Second down, less than a yard for Arkansas. Just outside their own 35 out of the wishbone. This time, Rouse heads wide, and he can rock. He might be gone. He's at least inside Lobo territory and out of bounds at the 42-yard line. James Rouse, a 6'1", 217-pound junior, and Jeff McDonald barely did catch up with him. Now, Danny Laura from his cornerback at the bottom of your screen will come up. I don't think he believes Rouse has this biggest, has this great speed, but there you see him getting around 28, Danny Laura. Finally gets a, a shoe top and followed by Jeff McDonald. Big gainer. First and 10, Arkansas in Lobo territory. Wishbone backs behind Quinn Groby. 
Rouse up the middle with a big hole. Cuts up field. He's gone. See you later. Touchdown, Razorbacks. Forty-two yard romp for James Rouse and the Razorbacks drive at 85 yards. They ran right into the vacated spot on the line of scrimmage. There is absolutely no one lined up over guard or tackle. Outside, Nicky Armijo was, was far too wide, and, but when they break in the middle, there is no safety. And Rouse just has too great a speed to, for anyone to catch in a 40-yard sprint. Kendall Trainer will kick the extra point. He's a good place kicker, and he powers it through the uprights. So 11-18 to go in the first quarter with your score. The Arkansas Razorback 7th, the New Mexico Lobos nothing. Stay right with us. Lobo basketball will continue Monday night in the pit. It's Western New Mexico. The Mustangs coming to town. We'll have it for you here on KGSW TV 14. Tip-off is at 10 on your Lobo sports station. Jim Lawwell along with Gary Ness. Jack Frost is nipping at our nose. It's cool here this afternoon. But the Razorbacks were hot. They went 85 yards in a hurry. Well, they sliced up the, off the defensive line pretty well on the, the two successive plays. And Rouse has shown us a great deal of speed out of that backfield. Trainer to boot it. Boy, does he hit this one into the end zone. Mathis will take it and down it there. Lobos start at their own 20. When we watch the Razorbacks this week on film, Rouse was impressive. He looked like he was very quick to the outside. There is a scoring drive. Six plays, 86 yards officially. And Rouse with the 42-yard touchdown run. Trainer hammering through the extra point. In fact, Jim, it was hard to understand how Arkansas, with the talent they have, has lost three games this year. What even amazes me more is the fact that Texas A&M shut them out. Of course, A&M has an outstanding defense. Owens in motion to the bottom of your screen. Garrison rolls the throw. Downfield incomplete. He wanted to get it to Al Owens, uh, threw it a bit wide of Al who dove, but couldn't get his hands on it. It'll be second down and 10 for New Mexico. Well, that's the first time that Barry Garrison, number 11, has elected to sprint out. And I wonder if that's because they feel they can't hold out Cherico in the rush from the pocket. So in what you try to do in that case is sprint out. Then you only have to clock to the side the quarterback is sprinting. You can let the backside come. High backs behind Barry Garrison this time. And the Lobos run with Shane Hall. And... He'll manage to weave his way out to around a 23-yard line. It'll be third and long for New Mexico. Shane running under people there. Kind of slipped under a couple of tacklers. The Lobos known as a passing team, and they've been putting it up thus far. Number 64 is Tony Cherico. He'll line up over the ball. Now here's how it looks if you're a linebacker or a defensive back or a person who unfortunately has seats in the end zone today. Over the middle, complete. Al Owens with a catch, but just shy of the first down. So Owens ran the pattern a couple of yards inside the first down marker. Yes, if you're going, you have to ask yourself, if you can make an eight yard completion, could it have been a 10 yard completion? Here's the rush, now that's dropping straight back. He keeps retreating as though it's a screen and then hits Al Owens over the middle. Now the Anthony Cooney made the hit. Now the Lobos are holding their punt unit on the line of scrimmage till the very last second, hoping to punt against the regular defensive unit of Arkansas and not the return team. End over end kick, Horton's gonna let it roll. Now picks it up, bobbles it and heads up field. Horton is nifty, he's across the 35 and gets out to the 38 yard line, so. After bobbling the ball, Horton showing he is not gifted with great speed, but he is a very smart football player when he gets his hands on the football. Tim Horton, 5'9", 167 from Conway, Arkansas. That was a 45-yard punt by Albrecht, although he did get it to roll about 15 yards. A return of 13. The Lobos net about 32 yards. And the Lobos have a player down, and it looks like Steve Holmes, I believe. Yep. And walking gingerly on that leg. Pam Cox and Larry Willock, assistant trainers, helping him off the field. And he gets a nice round of applause here from the appreciative fans. 
at War Memorial Stadium. Grovey will be the quarterback. 9.52 to go. First quarter, 7 to nothing. Arkansas leading it. Their first possession, they marked 86 yards. And the trade, the drive, I should say, culminated on James Rouse's gallop as he went in from 42 yards out. There's Grovey starting for the senior Greg Thomas who couldn't go this afternoon. Grovey rolling. Throws downfield complete. That's Russell making the catch inside Lobo territory at the 49-yard line. And that time Derek Russell did a good job to cradle that ball in. Well, he certainly showed that he has not only great speed, but he also has the hands. He's caught both of their completions thus far today. Uh, fake to the fullback to hold the linebackers. Sprinting out. Nice catch by Russell. Nice throw by Grovey. Jeff McDonald nearly got a hand on it. There is Russell and his background. Only a freshman. Out of the wishbone, Arkansas, Lobo territory. Grovey pitches. That's Rouse with a block. 45-40-35. Out of bounds at the 34-yard line. He'll go all the way in, but he stepped out of bounds. Rouse was on the verge of another romp. He has romped for two big plays and nearly broke that one, and we're just underway. Brett Ebert was the man who managed to push him out of bounds. 16 yards on the run. All right, now let's see where he steps out of bounds. Now, notice there are blockers in front. That's a lead option, and there is no, they're really not optioning on anybody. Now, let's see if where he steps out. Right there, Brett Heber knocked him out, and there he comes down out of bounds, too. I think of the previous step as well. Rouse heads out of the game for a play, a mere 81 yards in his first three carries. Grovey, first and 10 at the Lobo 34-yard line. This time Joe Johnson tries the middle, has room, breaks tackles, and Johnson dives to the 23 in Lobo territory. That's another first and 10 for the Razorbacks. Danny Lara finally brought him down. And watch the hole of the line of scrimmage now. Watch as this play develops. Fake to the fullback. This is a counter. Johnson leading through. Or Rouse leading through on the block. But notice how big the hole is. That superior strength of the offensive line is beginning to show against the Lobos' defensive front. Roby, first and 10 at the Lobo 23-yard line. Keeps it and pitches to Johnson. Johnson hit and dropped at the 21-yard line. Only a couple that time for Arkansas. Brian McKay moved downfield with a host of other Lobos. They did a good job of stringing out the option that time around. And the difference is Brett Heber's play number 22. Now watch Brett come from the top of your screen after the ball is pitched. He is in the area to help on the line of scrimmage. Now he forces Johnson back in where Brian McCabe can, get, can reach him. But it was Brett Heber's being there on the line of scrimmage to take the pitch man that, that made the play. Johnson has 24 yards in his first three carries. Rolling, Groby, downfield has a man. Russell incomplete. He was open, but Groby overthrew the football. There's been a place where Arkansas has lacked offensively this year. It has been their inability to throw the ball with any kind of success. Neither Thompson or Groby, neither one passed the ball that well. Randy Johnson, a cornerback, was on a blitz that time, and he forced Grovey to throw it a little bit before he was ready, and I really believe that had that was the reason he overthrew Russell. Russell certainly was not covered well. When you sacrifice an extra rusher out of your secondary, you're not going to have great coverage, but he forced him to throw it early. They've only got five seconds on the play clock. Grovey to throw downfield, slapped away by Jeff McDonald. So Arkansas goes up top on third down, and now that'll bring up a fourth down situation. And we should see Kendall Trainer coming on to attempt the field goal. Nice job by Jeff McDonald, number 12, 12, 25. Now he keeps the play in view, everything in front. Watch him come across and knock that down. You know, I'm not sure, but what Randy, or Brad Heber might have had an interception had not Jeff knocked the ball away. A field goal attempt of about 38 yards. Trainer's a good kicker. He's hit it long enough. And he got it. We're going to take a break. 
the field goal of 38 yards, and Arkansas leads it 10 to nothing. Stay with us now, won't you? In the third period. Back at War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock, Arkansas, 10 nothing. They tell us officially the field goal was 37 yards. Arkansas leading it. They scored on their first two possessions. And Kendall Trainer teeing it up for the Razorbacks as we resume action. Trainer hits this kick with authority. It might go out of the end zone. No, not quite, but Lobos will let it go all the way to the back of the end zone. The wind is at Trainer's back right now, and it, the wind will pick up and then let up a little bit. Right now it seems to be blowing cross field at times, but it does change. Here's the drive by the Razorbacks. They started at their own 39. They went 61 yards in six plays. And the 37-yard field goal by Kendall Trainer. Here's Barry Garrison, first and 10 at his own 20. Arkansas up 10 to nothing. Here's Scott Howard on a little draw play, and Scott nets about five on that one. Ricky Williams, a six-foot, 230-pound senior linebacker, playing his last home game, slanted in for the tackle for the Razorbacks. Nice run by Scott. Barry Luther and Charles Usrey are pulling ahead to lead this play. Five-yard gain on first down is, is really good. That softens up the rush by the defensive front. Lobos need to get a few more five-yard gains on first down. Garrison, you see the numbers right there. Only one pass that really had any much yardage. A completion for a first down of 11 yards. Howard running and breaks tackles and has the first down. Driven out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Anthony Cooney finally got Howard, but that was an inspired run by the St. Pius product. Yes, it was. Now, Rick, you don't run out of many Ricky Williams tackles. Now watch for number 57, the linebacker for the Razorbacks, 57 right there. He gets a clean shot at Scott. Scott runs right out of that tackle. Okay, let's take another angle view of it. In fact, it looks like some Ricky might have had his face mask a little bit. That guy does there, Anthony Cooney. Really had him by the face mask. Dump it off to Shane Hall, who is creamed at the 41. So the Lobos got a little more than five, but Shane Hall paid the price. He paid a heavy price for it. Ricky Williams made that hit, and it was a hard hit. Well, Ricky Williams missed that tackle in front of their bench, and I imagine the coaches were uh, after him a little bit. So he comes back with a vengeance right here. Second down, we'll call it four. Out of the eye, Shane Hall hit and dropped. He did not get back in the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down. Boy, the Razorbacks, Tony Cherico, they're all American. He just got a hold of Shane Hall and manhandled him. He's so quick. Now, he caught that play from behind. Tony Cherico can take the gap that he wants, and once he gets through that gap, he's quick enough to chase the play down from behind, which is what he did in that when he tackled Shane Hall. The lone running back is Scott Howard on third and five. Garrison to throw it. Mathis incomplete. Threw the ball a little in behind him, but Terrence was hearing footsteps. You could see three Razorbacks honing in on Mathis as that ball came to him. That quick screen has been well scouted. Now that was thrown a little bit behind him. Now here's the delay on the on the sideline again. The punting team has not come on. They're waiting till the last second because the ball is on the hash mark near the Lobo bench. Now watch it from this perspective. You can see if the Lobos are going to punt, they'll send the punting team on en masse. Here they come. But see, this prevents Arkansas having the opportunity to get their punt return team in the ballgame. You can see the time remaining in the first quarter. 5.59, Arkansas leading 10-0. Bad punt by Albrecht off the side of his foot. Horton bobbles it, heads up field, and is spinning out of tackles and then dropped at the 29-yard line. Horton was going to let that roll, but the ball was taking a good Lobo roll, so he decided to try to pick it up, and Brett Heber was downfield with Orlando Lavelle, and they finally got a hold of him and dropped him. Penalty marker on the play. There is Horton. He's a senior. 
not blessed with great speed, but excellent hands and uh, can be very deceiving in his ability to uh, get out of tackles, out of the grass with people and make the big play. Only a 36-yard punt there. With the, when you delay like that and kick against the regular defensive unit, you'd like to be able to get a 40-yard or plus punt. Here are the officials. Jack Baker is a referee, the man in a white cap. Then John Gaston, Robinson, Underwood, Reeves, Jim Potter, Phil Luckett. Out of the wishbone, Arkansas. They've scored every time they've added Grovey on the option. Pitch it out, and there they go. Up the field and fumbling the ball, but he was out of bounds. Nice hit that time by Brad Heber. As carrying the ball up the field was Tony Holmes, and Holmes left it on the turf, but was out of bounds before he dropped the football, obviously. Let's take a look at it. This is what you call inverted support. The cornerback comes to take the quarterback, which Troy Clewis, number four, did. That leaves the safety to come out, take the pitch man, and... Brett was a little bit late getting there. They give him eight on the play, second and two. Holmes is just a sophomore. So a whole new backfield in there for the Razorbacks with the exception of the guy who has it, Joe Johnson, breaking tackles into Lobo territory down to the 45-yard line. Now the tackling for the Lobos was not very good on that play and a few previous and is that fatigue. All right now, if the runner cuts back against the flow, this was designed to go off the right tackle. Now, Musa Kaniki uh, let, first let him get out of his grasp. Then Troy Clewis eventually, Danny Lara has to come over with help from John Bell from the line of scrimmage to make the tackle. You see the missed tackles there. When a runner cuts back, if he breaks a few of those, he can go all the way. Grovey at the throttle at the 46 of New Mexico. Arkansas leading 10-0. Grovey, wide receiver, downfield, incomplete. Billy Winston was open, and it went right off his hands. They broke him open. There wasn't anybody near him. He just simply didn't catch the football. No, that looked like the triple option coming to the bottom of the screen. And the, believe me, the secondary thought it was a triple option coming. And everyone was up on the line of scrimmage to support on the run, and no one back with Winston, but just off his fingertips. Horton checking in now for Arkansas with the play. Winston checking out. Winston will play a tight end as well as a wide receiver. Groby dumps it off to Holmes, who doesn't have much room, and gets back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be third and ten for Arkansas. Brett Heber has been very active thus far in the game. That was a fine tackle by Brett. Indeed it was. When he can get there to the line of scrimmage to make those stops while the balls in the air are either being pitched or thrown, he has a lot better chance. Torrey Edwards, number 47, was the guy who forced the pass early. Helped on that play a lot. There are some of the Arkansas cheerleaders. It's cold. I wouldn't want to be in my shorts right now. And people probably wouldn't want to see me in my shorts right now. <laughs> Third and ten. Grovey in trouble, scrambles away. He may run it. And now he stops. Now he fires it complete. Somehow he got that ball downfield to Derek Russell. I don't know how. And they're very close to the first and ten. I don't either. How did he get his arm back and forward to release that ball? Watch this. Now, <laughs> Brian McCabe will be keeping drawing a beat on him, 52 coming up in your screen, but he does it, he sees the sideline, just gets, just releases it. Crowd is uh, excited because Arkansas is gonna go for it here on fourth down. Yeah, they need a little less than a yard out of the wishbone. Quinn Grovey is the quarterback. Grovey is just a freshman. He's out of Duncan, Oklahoma, and he's gonna use a timeout. There is numbers thus far this afternoon. So on fourth and less than a yard in Lobo territory inside the 37-yard line, Arkansas going for it. They lead it 10-0 with 3.44 to go in the first period. Now tonight live at 7 p.m. It'll be the finals of that NIT Big Apple basketball tournament from Madison Square Garden in New York City. It'll be the Florida Gators and the Iowa State, or I should say in the Seton Hall Pirates tonight for the championship. That's right here on your sports station, KGSW TV 14. Lobos in the consolation tonight against Iowa State. 
They played Seton Hall last night. And of course, we were there televising it, Gary. You got to look at it. Seton Hall looked very impressive. Well, indeed they did. They're not all that big, but oh, their quickness and speed. And, and they're savvy, too. I mean, the press didn't seem to bother them. They, they beat the press down the court. And uh, they, when they got hot for those three-point shots, it was um, Katie bar the door. <laughs> it's a great trip for New Mexico's basketball program and a lot of great exposure. Western New Mexico Monday night. Next on the agenda after tonight for New Mexico. Groby on the keeper pitches. Oh, Johnson's outside. And he's across the 30. He got plenty more than he needed. Almost 10 yards. Down to just outside the Lobo 28. Brett Heber with another tackle. All right, let's see. How are they able to turn the corner? There is nobody on the pitch, man. This is a lead option. If we can see number 26 is blocked. Okay, there it is. That makes it a lead option. You've got a man on the one who would take the pitch, man. Then now it's the pursuit has to catch him, and he's got at least a 10-yard game. There's Joe Johnson. He's a junior. First and 10, Arkansas. A little counter pitch. And this time, Tony Holmes goes wide with blocking. 25 and down to the 20. About nine on that particular play. It'll be second and one for Arkansas. Steve Webster finally bringing down Tony Holmes. With blocking is right. There was a counter option play and the fullback and the other halfback out in front. They just took down the interference. Makes it awfully difficult to sport on a run with an option and two blockers in front. Little counter play to Holmes to the 15. He's got the first down and more to the 13. So Arkansas knocking on the door. Brett Heber again in on the stop for New Mexico. And Musa Kanicki comes downfield as well. Basic power play out of the triple, out of the wishbone set. One back leading through for another. Lyman all charging ahead. Base blocking. That, that means block the man in front of you. First and 10, Arkansas. The Lobo 13. Joe Johnson breaks outside the five. He wants the end zone. Touchdown. Joe Johnson scampers in a 13-yard touchdown run. 16 to nothing, Arkansas. I believe that's the mirror of the previous play. The halfback leading up through for the opposite halfback. Right there. Musa Kaniki has the first chance at him. Slips through his arms. Chris Houston's number 36. Slipping through too many tackles. Kendall Trainer with the extra point and he bangs it through. No, he didn't. Just wide to the left. That's not like him. 3.04 to go in the first quarter. 16-0 Arkansas following the mixed extra point and again the touchdown run by Joe Johnson. Okay, one slips through one tackle. There's two. Here's another three. Just slides right off. So he is been greased for this. Was that a greased hog, right? <laughs> That's the way it looked, all right. Arkansas has scored every time they've had the football. Now they said they probably wouldn't have that good of a crowd, but they still got a pretty good showing. It is very cold and windy this afternoon in Little Rock. There's Kendall Trainer, who is probably very upset with himself. He just missed the extra point. And it looked like he just did miss it. He hit it hard and must have just hooked it to the left. From Fayetteville, Arkansas. Home of the University of Arkansas. They also have a branch here in Little Rock. Then you've also got Arkansas Little Rock here as well. And they've got a fine basketball program. Arkansas loves athletics. They love sports. High end over end kick. Shane Hall bobbles, retrieves, and heads across the 20. Dives to the 26-yard line. The Lobos start at their own 26. Down 16 to nothing in the waning moments of the first quarter. Football. 
This time Arkansas goes 70 yards in nine plays. Johnson with a 13-yard touchdown run, and uh, Trainer misses the extra point. Split running backs behind Garrison, buried to throw. Downfield, Mathis out to the 48-yard line. The Lobos get 22 yards unofficially on that play. Let's make that 28 yards on the play. And there you see why number 15, Terrence Mathis, was leading the nation in receiving in several categories for five weeks of the season. Downfield, he can catch it in a crowd, especially downfield. Looking right as the defense, as the safety looks at it. This time the Lobos run it with Shane Hall, and he eschews one tackler and dives into Razorback territory. Outside the 48-yard line, Ricky Williams applying the hit that brought him to the artificial turf here at War Memorial. They call it Pro Turf. There are Garrison's numbers thus far this afternoon. Very respectable, but Barry has not thrown down field that often. Both times he has, he has found Mathis successfully. Pressure on Garrison. Here's Mathis wide open. Could be gone. 20, 15, 10. Out of bounds at the four. Terrence Mathis going to work. Anthony Cooney, quite a hit to carry Mathis out of bounds. And Terrence is shaking up a bit. Here's one-on-one -on -one coverage. Fake the running back out of the I formation. Now Terrence crosses the field. Slips a tackle. 45-yard pass, Garrison to Mathis. And Mathis gets up and gets a rousing cheer from the fans. The Razorbacks lead it 16 to nothing, but the Lobos now knocking on the door. Here's the running play to Scott Howard, and they stack him up at the line of scrimmage. Eric Whited led the way for Arkansas. They closed in very quickly. Lobos in this formation have three tight ends. John Duff is actually a back in the backfield. He's their starting tight end, but they also have Charleston Fobbs and Van McCormick in there. Now they tried to run off tackle with Duff leading, but there was no hole. Lobos now. Two tight ends set. Garrison lobs it to Mathis. Incomplete. He overthrew him. It'll be third and goal to go for the Lobos. That was Ben Floor over on the coverage for Arkansas. Lots of room in that corner of the end zone. Barry let him just a little bit too far. The defender has to line up with the inside position. In other words, he cannot let the, the receiver break inside. Crowd revving up. They want to stop New Mexico. Arkansas leading it. Al Owens in motion, looks like a passing play. It is. Garrison rolls with time into the end zone, incomplete. The Lobos had two receivers, Al Owens and Terrence Mathis, in the same spot. And, of course, that drew one, two, three, four defensive men on the coverage. Yes, he would like to have someone breaking across the middle. Create what they call a pit play or a, like a basketball screen. Now, this roll out all the way. I believe he's trying to throw for Mathis. Here's Rick Walsh with the field goal attempt of 21 yards. The barefooter hammers it, and it's good. So the Lobos are on the board. That was a snappy-looking drive, although they couldn't get it in the end zone. 1-12 to go, and a 21-yard field goal by Rick Walsh, and it's 16-3, Arkansas on top. But at least that's encouraging because the Lobos got it going, and they did so by going downfield to their All-American candidate, Terrence Mathis. Two catches downfield to Terrence Mathis. You know, you, 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 have to, you have to make the defense believe that you're going to throw deep in order to throw short. Sometimes you get wrapped up in patterns where you forget about throwing the ball deep, and the defense, if they expect you to throw short, heck, they're playing pass defense on the line of scrimmage. So the Lobos now back them off. I would see that... 
the defense open up now for the Lobos offense considerably more now that they have to respect Terrence downfield and ex you can expect to see double coverage. In other words, they'll ha Arkansas will have to put two men on number 15 to his side of the field at all times. There is your score, 16-3 Arkansas and Steve Albrecht will tee it up for New Mexico. A youngster dressed warmly and you need to be. Steve Albrecht is on the kicking formation for New Mexico. Barry Foster is deep for Arkansas. Barry Foster to return the kick for Arkansas will take it at the 12-yard line. Oh, he breaks it open. Foster across the 40, and a penalty marker is dropped. Could be a clip, as is so many times the case. Danny Laura with a good head-on tackle of Foster. And if Laura doesn't stop him, he's off to the races. Oh, what a tell. You're right. That was a good head-on open field tackle by Danny Laura, who pays the price. I, I have so much respect for number two. Got a holding over here. All right, we're gonna... He has to do this 18, 20 times a ball game. The senior from the suburbs of Dallas. Holding on the run back. First down. Holding against Arkansas. Brings the ball back to the 27, shall we call it? Head referee sounds a little bit like the cookie monster <laughs> from Sesame Street when he talks. All right. Lobos start at their own 26, and they are stopped at the four, and the field goal by Rick Walsh. Puts them on the board, Arkansas 16, New Mexico 3. Out of the wishbone, first and 10, Arkansas at their own 27. Groby up the middle with it, and they get about two, maybe three yards. That time, Arkansas just going straight ahead with the football, and it was Sammy Van Dyke, the senior fullback, carrying. Sammy Van Dyke, that senior fullback, played at Lake Highlands High School in the Dallas area in Richardson, Texas. Played there where uh, a former Lobo baseball player by the name of Jay Higgins coaches at Lake Highlands High School. He's been there for many years. There's Ken Hatfield, former coach at the Air Force Academy. Ironically, Hatfield 0-2 versus New Mexico career-wise. Groby on a counter pitch to Holmes, and the freshman breaks it out. He's to the 40-yard line. It'll be first and 10, Arkansas. Brett Heber with another tackle for New Mexico. John Bell, a freshman defensive lineman from Del Norte High School, almost catches this play from behind. Now, did you notice that counter step? That's to get the linebackers flowing one way. There's John Bell. Can't quite grab him. Brett Heber makes another fine tackle up in the open field. Bone, Grovey back to pass. Looking deep. Horton there. Incomplete. Tossed the ball over the wrong shoulder. Horton had worked his way free, but the football was not there. There's Tony Cherico, everybody's All-American candidate at nose guard and most likely a first-round pick in the NFL. He was a hyperactive child, we understand, and when he started school in kindergarten first grade, uh, it was he was diagnosed as being hyperactive, and they wanted to give him medication. His dad says, no, let's let him be an addict on his own. All righty, 16-3 Razorbacks. We'll be right back. <laughs> David Shell, Daryl Norty fans, remember him, he was about 40 pounds lighter and he came to Arkansas and came out of his shell, so to speak. 16-3 <laughs> after one quarter. Grovey scrambling, now he can run with it and he heads up field across midfield with a block and down to the Lobo 40-yard line. Brett Heber with another tackle. What's the New Mexico record for tackles by a defensive back and a half? Brett Heber is really picking up a lot of tackles as though Brett Heber expects to make the tackle every play. Grovey can indeed run with the ball here. Now this, you get flushed out of the pocket. Once you start this, it's all athletic ability. And watch but how the heady Arkansas Razorbacks start picking up blocks once he crosses the line of scrimmage. Some kind of block downfield on uh, Steve Webster as well. First and 10 Arkansas outside the Lobo 40. 
They've scored every time they've had the football. Joe Johnson going wide. Cuts up field. And he's all the way to the 31. A gain of nine and very close to another Razorback. First and ten. Another defensive back with another tackle this time. Danny Laura. Second and one. When you play a triple option team and you, who executes as well as the Arkansas Razorbacks here, it's very seldom that the defensive front will make the tackle. They'll force you to, to go with the third option, and secondary people have to make the tackle. Johnson's number is 69 yards, seven carries thus far. Second and very short for Arkansas. Out of the wishbone, Grovey the quarterback. The freshman hands off. Arkansas will have the first down as Jim Simpson, a sophomore, will die for first down yardage and more. And Simpson ran out of John Bell's tackle at the line of scrimmage, and John did get his shoe, which he threw unceremoniously back behind the line of scrimmage after he came up with only the shoe. You might say he eschewed the tackle, huh? He eschewed the tackle. That's There's it. John Bell. E-S-H-O-E-D. -E Always carry a professor with you everywhere you go. That way you can know how to spell all these words. Here's Tony Holmes, and he gets a couple. That'll be it. Arkansas right now really controlling the line of scrimmage, and uh, they have that offensive line that averages 294 pounds across the front. They lead 16 to 3, 13 minutes, 24 seconds and counting remaining in the first half. Jim, if I had an Arkansas, uh, if I had an offensive line like Arkansas's at 294 pound average, all I would do would be just run forward. Second down and eight, Grovey to pass. Dumps it off, picked off. Boy, that's an excellent job. Troy Clewis brings it upfield after picking it off out of bounds of the 27. Big turnover and good concentration by Troy. Gary and I were watching film the other day. Troy came in to join us for a while. Yes, he was, and it paid off, didn't it? He's right where he should be. He has the position on the defender. Saw the ball coming, reached up, grabbed it. Down the sideline. Got 15 yards after he picked it off. Altadena, California can be proud. Lobos finally stop Arkansas down 16 to three. A drive here and they're right back in it. Shane Hall on a little shuttle pass for about four out in the flat. Otis Lloyd, the 5'9 junior, made the tackle on Shane Hall. One of those quick screens, but the wide receiver is so wide that he can't come back to make the tackle and make the block to free the receiver on that quick screen for better yardage. Second down. We'll call it a long five for New Mexico. Shane all to run it this time, and Shane is dropped. Good sharp job of tackling that time by Arkansas. Reggie Hall came slashing in. The Halls met. <laughs> Reggie and Shane. Eight out of 14 for Barry, 103 yards. I believe he needs 137 yards in total offense this afternoon to break the all-time Lobo total offense record, so he will probably do that this afternoon. Third down conversions, neither club has been that effective. Third and five, New Mexico. Mathis with room, first and ten Lobos. So after going downfield to Terrence those couple of times, they were well off of him that time, and he picked up the easy first and ten. That's exactly what that does. Terrence was in motion, but instead of coming all the way to the sideline, he stopped about halfway between the hash mark and then just turned up field because no one was running with him. There's Freddie Childress, all 348 pounds of him. Well, they packs quite a grocery bill week in and week out. Shane Hall will dive up the middle on a little delay and gets about five yards. Lobo's offense now beginning to look a lot sharper. Tony Cherico and LaSalle Harper were in on the stop. That's what the Lobos need to do, trailing 16 to three, is drive down and get some more points on the board. Let's see on this draw play now, Scott Meaney, number 50, out in front. Now on a draw play, the 
quarterback carries the ball back to the runner who picks his way wherever he sees a seam to run in. Mathis heading to the bottom of your screen and Owens to the top of your screen. Garrison back to throw it, looking deep, complete. John Duff hit, fumbles, Lobos get it back, Shane Hull. Now, it's not a fumble, incomplete pass, the one official says. This is Lobo football on your Lobo Sports Station, KGSW TV 14. Jim Law will hear along with Gary Ness. It was an incomplete pass. It'll bring up third down for New Mexico. That's an unfortunate break. It is. It seems well thrown by Barry Garrison. Good protection from that offensive line. Right there in his hands. Well, you know, that. it seemed like he came down. His feet touched before the ball was knocked loose. That could have been ruled very easily a fumble. Out of the shotgun on third and five. Garrison downfield, incomplete. One at Al Owens. Good attempt by Al, diving over there. So fourth down, and here comes the Lobo punting team. Should have an opportunity with a good punt to pin Arkansas deep in their own territory. And because the ball is not on the, on the hash mark nearest the Lobo bench, the team came on. Not a good punt by Albrecht. Horton will pick it up at the 15. Heads up field to the 25 and out to the 27-yard line. That punt very uniquely was only probably, looked to be maybe 10 to 15 feet in the air at its highest point. Yeah, it's going to be the, that, that gets the award for the lowest punt of the year anyway. Line drive. Well, looks like we have a penalty marker down on the play and it's going to go against New Mexico. A punt of 39 yards, a return of 12. Be curious to see if Arkansas will keep the football or perhaps a penalty will go against the Razorbacks. Ideally, you should get the snap on your right hip if you're a right-footer kicker, and that ball was on his left, at his left foot. That's probably the reason for the low kick. Appears as though Danny Lara is about to execute the option, so maybe it was against the uh, Razorbacks, Jim. And still rather confusing. That's not. The score is 16-3. Time remaining 10 minutes and 22 seconds. It was fourth down and five, but a long five. The penalty would not give the Lobos the first down. However, it would give them an opportunity to go on fourth down. They wouldn't need very much. It would bring the ball to just inside Razorback territory. Some confusion about what the Lobos want to do. Here is the Honorable Governor of Arkansas, Bill Clayton. Clint. <laughs> Bill Clayton. Clint. He, he's standing up to make the option himself. He wants to. <laughs> Substitution infraction on the defense. Fourth down. <laughs> <laughs> there is the intrepid end zone cameraman. Well, that's a duty I will uh, renege on. Thank you. You better hope the guy that's running the crane likes you. Quarterback sneak, and the Lobos have the first and ten in Razorback territory. Good David Lolly, number 76, is getting some work on the offensive line this afternoon. This is, as a senior, his last varsity football game. Behind Scott Maney and Terrence Donaldson does Garrison sneak for the first down. I will be curious to see if Scott Maney will... He didn't make first team all whack, and I, and I think that if perhaps he played on a team that won a little more, Gary, he might have had an opportunity. He is that good. I agree with you, Jim, very much. Here's the play flicker, and... Uh, Slapped down by the Razorbacks who weren't fooled a bit. It's Ricky Williams, David Shell, applying all kinds of pressure. Let's see who slaps it down. All right, now the give to the back, Tony Jones, and he turns around, flips it back to Garrison. Shell slapped it down. Williams was putting the heat on. There it is. Toss it back and. Uh, with number eight. You'd like to have a little more time. The, the, 
the business of all that lateraling and so forth is to give you time for your receivers to get downfield, but he just didn't have it. Wayne Martin was pressuring as well. Second and ten. Another one slapped down by Wayne Martin. So the defensive front for Arkansas is asserting themselves right now. Getting some congratulations there from Tony Cherico. The protection has been surprisingly good up to now. And actually, it's just Martin's height and reach that was able to bat that down because he was far enough away not to be a problem to the quarterback. Razorbacks lead it 16 to 3. Lobos trying to move it. They're at the Arkansas 48, third and 10. They set up a little screen. This is Duff. He's in trouble, but breaks one tackle. Could have some room. Out of bounds around the 41, shy of the first and 10. It'll be fourth down and about three. Eric Bradford got a hold of Duff and tossed him to the turf. And was that ever hustled by Eric Bradford? This play is set up very well. Now he runs to his right. He's going to throw back to his left to a tight end who really hasn't moved far from the line of scrimmage. Wyatt there nearly had him. Runs out of Wyatt's grasp. Now watch the hustle back there. Holy cow. Eric Bradford came across out of nowhere to make that play. Short of the first down. The Lobos have used a timeout here because it'll be fourth down, a little less than three, just inside the Razorback 41-yard line. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back to see what happens. 9.45 remaining in the first half. Arkansas leads it by 13. There's your score. Back at War Memorial Stadium, John Duff on a quick little look-in pass, and it's first and 10 New Mexico at the 34 of Arkansas. Owens headed to the top of the screen. Shane Hall picks his way through for perhaps four yards of the 30-yard line. The Lobos needed the big first and 10, and they got it. Tony Cherico, 10 third, it, made the tackle. That play has been used. It's been mildly effective because Shane Hall's good at picking a hole there, but when you've got a guy as agile as Tony Cherico on the, over the ball, it's, uh, it's, it's hard to get much room to run inside. The Lobos have started to move the football, and they're giving Arkansas a run for their money, down 16-3, to three, but on the move. Complete to Duff. Duff at the 20, and to the 19-yard line. The first and 10 there for New Mexico. Big John Duff, let's see if this is a bootleg action where John Duff crosses the field. Yes, he's lined up at the right-hand side of the, of the offensive line, comes across. Linebackers lose him in all the commotion, but now they converge very well. Ben Floor leading the way defensively for Arkansas, first and 10 New Mexico. They mark it outside the 19 in Razorback territory. Garrison to Mathis with blockers. Terrence to the 15, puts his head down to the 13-yard line. A gain of six that time. Lobos get a touchdown here, Gary, at 16 to 10. And the Lobos are very much in it. Another version of the quick screen. Now, in this case, Mathis was in motion, and he stopped behind the wide receiver. Shane Hall hustled out there to get a block. They got six yards out of it. They need the touchdown. Scott Howard with room across the 10 into the six-yard line. It'll be first and goal to go there for New Mexico. Good call. What they did was had three wide receivers in there, spread them out across the field, make it look like a pass, and give it to Scott Howard, who has the strength to get the first down for you right here. Watch him run out of a couple of tackles. This has been the gray area for the Lobos offensively all season. Inside the 10-yard line. They trail 16-3. They need a touchdown. Second time today with this opportunity. Split running backs behind Garrison. Wants to throw. He's in trouble. Fires it up for grabs. Out of the end zone. Good thinking by Gary. So Barry Garrison tossed it out of the end zone. For a while there, it looked like it might be up for grabs. That 
that's an unusual defensive call there. They came with a blitz on first and goal from the seven yard line. Yes, they were expecting pass and the pass play was called. It was the bootleg play that's been successful for them this year, but they never got a chance to throw it because of the heat on Ferry from his backside. Garrison with a running play to Scott Howard, and he's stacked up at the line of scrimmage. It'll be third and goal to go. Arkansas claims they've got a fumble. Trying to influence the officials who say no. <laughs> All right, now this is a short counter play. Now David Lolly and Terrence Donaldson, 76 and 65, are up ahead. Now he's trying to climb over David Lolly's block, but it appeared as though outs if he'd have gained a, if he'd have gone a little bit further to his right or to the outside, he might might have had more of a hole. I have a problem with the clock, I believe. Yep, all of a sudden, she's gone to zero. Now, in this situation, usually the field judge is responsible for keeping a game clock on the field. And he's the one who will, who's given the information to the referee in the white cap, and they'll come to this side, make the determination, ask him to put some. 7.14 is the time remaining in the first half. Lobo's third and goal to go inside the seven-yard line of Arkansas. Now, if you don't get it on third down, trailing 16-3, to last game of the season and winless, do you kick a field goal or do you go ahead and uh, go for the gusto, go for the touchdown? I would go for the uh, touchdown because this is the second time your team's driven down the field. You're asking me, Jim, I would say I'd go for the touchdown. I'd want it to pay off. Monday night at 8, KGSW TV 14 and Fox Broadcasting are proud to present the Television Academy Hall of Fame Awards. Such notables as Johnny Carson, Bob Hope, and Jim Henson will be honored. Join us Monday night here on KGSW TV 14 for this remarkable television event. In fact, Jim, I would have had two plays called already, and I wouldn't even huddle after this down if we didn't get in the end zone. That's, but that's why I'm up here, not down there. <laughs> we have the easy job. Third goal, Howard DeLone running back. Tony Jones in motion. Garrison with time into the end zone. Jones... Touchdown, New Mexico. That's what they needed. Boy, Garrison really threw that ball wide of the field, and he had something on it. That was a long pass for a six-yard touchdown play. This was thrown. Now, watch. He'll be on the right hash mark. You see he's backing up on the hash marks? He has to come to the far corner of the end zone. He stood in there well against the pressure, and nice catch here by number 21, Tony Jones. Well, if you're Arkansas, you were at 16 to nothing. Now is 6.44 to go in the first half. It's 16 to nine. Walsh to kick the extra point. It looks like it's good, and it is. So the Lobos, with a touchdown and an extra point, could take the lead. We'll be right back, but first, let's pause for these messages. Back at War Memorial Stadium, Jim Lawell along with Gary Ness. That's not Gary Ness right there, however. That's a person with earmuffs, and you need those this afternoon. Anytime the head referee is on microphone, you need them. And when the wind picks up, it's very cold indeed. So Lobos now have charged back into the football game, trailing at 16 to 10, and Albrecht kicks it off. The Razorbacks will down it in the end zone. Barry Foster had an excellent return earlier. That time said, no, we'll start at the 20. Arkansas moving into the wind, leading 16 to 10. Obviously, this defensive series is probably, you don't want to belabor the point, and that's the way the Lobos went down and scored a big six-yard touchdown pass to Tony Jones. Tony Jones is number 21. It was a six-yard touchdown pass. But defensively now, I mean, really, this is a big series. I mean, you don't want to over-exaggerate, but you stop here and get the football back, you've got some momentum. They 
pitch it this time, and Tony Holmes will be dropped for a loss by New Mexico. Lobos came swarming in hard. Randy Johnson was in the backfield. I mean, he was across the line of scrimmage to take the pitch man, and that's the difference. Now, Jim, the point you're talking about, the important defensive series, the defense has stopped Arkansas. They picked off that pass. Troy Clewis' interception was set up the first touchdown for the Lobos, and so the defense believes now they can play with the Arkansas offense. Well, the Razorbacks have reason to feel they could be snake bit in their previous two games in Little Rock. They have lost, and they lost to Texas on the last play of the game here. Scrambling is Groby with a penalty marker down, and he'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that'll be it. Well, maybe a little more than that. They mark it outside the 19. We'll see which way the marker goes. The Lobos might refuse this, since it'll be third down and about 11. Let's see if it's a major. At the line of scrimmage, it was probably either a procedure or offsides or encroachment penalty. Groby has the great speed and athletic ability if you give him, if you force him to scramble. Illegal motion on the offense. Penalty is refused. Third down. And so we have an important third down for Arkansas right here. And then the other game here, Miami, the University of Miami of Florida, bombed Arkansas 51 to 7. Arkansas at that time was undefeated. Miami has an excellent team. In zone look, Groby on third and long, dumps it off. Ball bobbled and Arkansas will be stopped short. J.R. Brown had the football. And what a play by Troy Lewis, number four, whose interception set up the New Mexico touchdown. Watch Troy Clewis rally to the ball here. Watch number four coming out of your screen. Open field tackle. That's the kind of tackle Lobos were missing early in the game. Indeed. Lobos will get it back trailing 16 to 10, and they should have excellent field position. Kendall Trainer to punt. Hits it nicely. Terrence Mathis will get a return. Nope, he lets it roll, and going to take a very good Razorback roll all the way to the 32-yard line. Why you let that one roll, I have no idea. 5.04 to go in the first half. And now the offense, who is beginning to establish itself. Very important. There's plenty of time here. Five, and five minutes and four seconds left in the half. 44-yard punt. Lobos start at their own 32. Arkansas leading 16 to 10. Lobo's going with three wide receivers and number 26, Scott Howard, the only remaining back. Garrison wants to run. Scott Howard bobbles and gets it back and is hammered after a gain of about a yard. Regretfully, that one just never materialized for New Mexico. It'll be second and long. It was Otis Lloyd who really lassoed Howard and brought him down. A little short counter play. Pull, <coughs> pull the opposite side of the line, uh, the line but there was just no hope. Garrison, I believe, has broken that total yardage record unless he gets sacked a couple of times. 148 yards total now. Congratulations to the senior from El Dorado High School. Garrison with a play-action fake, looking downfield. Throws, nearly picked off. In fact, we'll see how they rule it. Ben Floor says he's picked it off. And Floor did pick it off. That was an excellent interception. The pass was thrown to a pattern that wasn't there. There was some miscommunication somewhere. It's either, it's over John Duff. John really didn't look like he was reaching for it, like he wasn't expecting it. Fine interception by Floor. Garrison was under pressure when he threw and was hit hard to the turf. A turnover, Arkansas, first and 10 at their own 46. A little running play to midfield, a gain of about four. 
What of course that Lobos trailing at 16-10. What of course that accomplishes, well as we see here, get a, another look at the pressure on Garrison and he pays the price here. Martin, who has been a thorn in Garrison's side, knocking down a pass and then that pressure there. There's Garrison and Ed Larson who is red-shirted this year. Mike Shepard to your left, the Lobo head coach. Play action bait. Groby wants to throw down field, and Derek Russell has it and loses it around the Lobo 40. It'll be third down for Arkansas. Comment I was starting to make in the previous play, Jim, is that the, what that interception does is lose field position for the Lobos because Arkansas gets the ball right at midfield. And just when the Lobos were establishing some momentum in the game, but the defense to stop them here can still force a punt. Third down. Out of the wishbone, the Razorbacks. Just inside Arkansas territory. Groby, downfield, complete. Great catch by Horton, out of bounds at the 41. Well, you can't go get the football any better than that. No, you can't. And the Lobos had a corner blitz coming, or a blitz from inside out. 22, Brett Heber is going to get across the line of scrimmage, number 22. You see him there? He's not going to let Grovey get outside. But Grovey does get the pass away for the first down. That was some play by number four. Number three as well. And number three, the receiver. Big first and ten for the Razorbacks. J.R. Brown dives. Loose football. Lobos say they've got it. Steve Webster has a football. Fumble recovery, New Mexico. So the Lobos with 3.22 to go. Get it back, trailing 16 to 10. This was the break they needed. And let's see who causes this fumble. There you see. Fumble was caused by... Mickey Armijo or Orlando Labella, 68 or 69, we can't tell, but that who that's who caused the fumble, and Steve Webster we saw climb up with the ball. You saw the time remaining in the score. A Lobo touchdown, an extra point, puts them on top. It was Mickey Armijo who punched the ball loose. Steve Webster recovered. Garrison dumps it off to Hall with two blockers. Shane, 40. And dives to the 45, very close to a first and 10 for New Mexico. Ricky Williams catching Shane Hall by the feet. The omnipresent number 57, Williams, Ricky Williams. This is this screen is set up now. Watch how well Shane Hall uses blockers. Barry Luther and Scott Maney out in front. Even John Duff, the tight end, who did not release downfield but stayed in the block. Second and very short. Less than a foot for New Mexico. Let's see if they waste one and go up top. Mathis to the bottom of the screen. Hall runs it. First and ten. And spins to the 49-yard line. Now the Lobos on the move. Trailing 16 to 10. Right now watch at the end of this play. Now there's Tony Jones, number 21, out in front. Shane Hall steps out of one tackle. Terrence Mavis staying on his feet and blocking high as he is supposed to do on the screen. Someone had a whole face mask and beard. Lobo is out of the huddle. 2.22 to go in the first half. They trail it 16 to 10. Garrison over the middle of the hall. Complete. Shane into Razorback territory at the 48, a gain of only three. Ricky Williams made the stop. Shane's going to look around and, and think that Ricky Williams is a relative of his. He's always asking him for money. He's always there. Whenever he turns around, there's Ricky Williams, 57. Below two minutes. Time becoming an issue. Lobos have one time out left. Garrison, incomplete. One of John Duff and was hit and hit hard. It was Chad Rowland who rolled by Barry Garrison. From the blind side where quarterbacks can't see. They, he goes in front of David Lolly. He crosses in front of David Lolly behind Terrence Donaldson. And there you see why that pass went awry. 
Razorbacks by six. Time running out in the first half, 143. Owens, top of the screen. Tony Jones, Terry Mathis, bottom of the screen. There's Garrison to pass. Hit, sacked. Wayne Martin brought him to the turf. I believe that's the first sack of Garrison this afternoon. Martin again. Martin on the line of scrimmage has been much more of a problem than Tony Cherico, the celebrated defensive lineman. There you see Martin at the top. Once again, Garrison wanted to throw to his left, and the pressure came from the blind side. Martin back deep to return the punt. Lobos might have a mix-up. There are only two men to the line of scrimmage to the bottom of your screen. Shane Hall coming over, and the Lobos call timeout. It's fourth down and 13. They have the ball at their own 46, trailing 16 to 10, 104 to go. Now perhaps they're thinking about going for it. Actually, I believe it was Arkansas who called the timeout because they saw something in the strangest formation they had ever seen. And they were the ones who wanted to make sure they knew what to do. All right, that's what it was. Tomorrow night, don't miss Fox Weekend Television on KGSW TV 14. It all starts at 6 with 21 Jump Street, followed by Weirwolf or Werewolf, whichever you prefer. Up next at 7.30, it's Married with Children, followed by the Tracy Ullman Show and Duet. You can have a real Sunday night alternative with Fox Weekend Television right here on your Fox station, KGSW TV 14. Well, were the Lobos doing that on purpose? It looked like there was confusion on their side. I don't know, but the confusion worked because Arkansas was confused. Now the Lobos are coming back with the regular offensive unit. You see Barry Garrison, number 11 there. Now let's see. Now this is to get the, the regular defensive unit of Arkansas on the field. Now let's see if they go for the punt now on fourth down. It's, remember, the ball's near their hash, near their bench. Let's see if we see the wholesale change in units. Now there's only two seconds now left on the... Clock to get the playoff, and the Lobos will take a delay of game penalty. But the clock wasn't moving. 104 remaining in the first half. Well, uh, Arkansas will take the penalty, and that might allow them to get a little more field position with just over a minute to go. And now they have the time to make the substitutions they want to get the return team. There's Tim Horton. He'll return the punt. Albrecht hits it hard on the spiral. Horton running over and gets it. 25, 30. 35 and dives to the 38-yard line. So, Arkansas has good field position. They'll start at their own 38. They've got 54 seconds. They lead it 16 to 10. And we may get a chance to see Brett Heber and Shane Hall make this tackle. Jim, your comment earlier about Brett Heber making so many tackles this half. It's be interesting to see how many tackles he has been in on this first half against Arkansas. That was a return of 18 yards after a 39-yard punt. Roby wants to throw deep. Fires to the sideline to J.R. Brown, who's ridden out of bounds. The clock will stop. They didn't get a lot on that. Brings it out to about the 43, a gain of four yards. There is the one of the younger Razorback fans. This pass thrown short, but thrown to the sideline to, to try to get out of bounds, stop the clock in this situation for Arkansas. Troy Clue has straightened him up. That's what you call a back him up tackle right there. Groby, back to throw it. Way downfield, Russell incomplete, picked off was tipped up by Cluis and then picked off by Danny Laura. So the Lobos get the turnover. They'll have 40 seconds. Troy Cluis almost has his second interception. Troy Cluis is the one who first gets to the ball. 
And here in his playing his last game as a senior, Danny Lahr, number 28, with a finger and a half missing on either hand, makes that interception. Garrison straight back. He got to go deep now. Here's Mathis and out of bounds at the 47-yard line. A pass will get him 16. We're down to 34 seconds. Alicia Lobos would like to get within field goal range. Chris Hunter drove Mathis out of bounds. Lobos without a huddle. And Mike Henderson works the sideline with Terrence Mathis. He's at the top of the screen. Now, he clears the area for Mathis. Garrison out of the shotgun, over the middle, dump incomplete. John was probably smart to not catch that football. Now the clock stops, gives them a chance to huddle. Had he caught the ball and not gotten out of bounds, the Lobos would have gone without a huddle. 16 to 10, Arkansas. The Lobos trailed 16-3 after one quarter. And a touchdown pass to Tony Jones, and the extra point made it 16 to 10. Hall with a little draw play is buried. Lobos have one timeout left, and they'll use it with 21 seconds remaining in the first half. Well, you got time perhaps for maybe three more plays if you can uh, get out of bounds. Depends on how far downfield you want to throw the ball. If you want to throw it downfield the way, you probably got. Uh, well, you got a chance for two plays, and if you can stop the clock to get a field goal. I can tell you there's some rustling here, and the, the fans at War Memorial Stadium aren't too pleased with his 16-10 lead over the Lobos, a winless team. Here you see Pam Cox, an assistant trainer, bringing some water to the offensive line. I think the offensive line against Tony Cherico and... His mates have done an admirable job this afternoon. Art Valero, their offensive line coach, getting a, should get a lion's share of that credit. Well, I think the real key in the game has been the fact that since the first quarter, the Lobo defense has been able to stop Arkansas offensively. And from watching Arkansas now for a half, they cannot throw the football. If you could get ahead of them, which has been the case, I think if you get ahead of them, you'll beat them because they can't throw the football. Garrison back out of the shotgun. Looking deep for Mathis and out of bounds at the 41 in Razorback territory. Now, he got 15 seconds left. Perhaps you go for one more play, but you gotta get out of bounds with it so you'll have time to attempt the field goal. The wind is at the back of New Mexico. Well, the one thing you don't wanna do is catch it and run that clock down. Lobos have spent all their timeouts. If you do catch it, you got to catch it and get out of bounds. Garrison straight back. Looking way deep for Mathis. Might have him. Mathis, touchdown New Mexico. We're tied at 16, and the extra point could put the Lobos on top. Unbelievable. Well, it is a great play except for one thing. Al Owens at the top of the... Al Owens at the sideline at the top had rocked forward right in front of the linesman and the linesman threw his flag immediately there will be a motion penalty against the Lobos that will bring it back but that doesn't stop the Arkansas fans from booing they don't like this at all what a throw here by number 11 Barry Garrison end zone view no one can stay with Mathis if you'll run him downfield like that that's been the scenario for New Mexico Outside, all year on the offense Repeat first down. And you know, it's not a matter of the officials picking on them because you picked it up right from the snap, Gary. You saw it. Well, you can see it from here. Now well, that's just really backbreaking because what a shock that would have been. With the extra point, the Lobos lead at the half. Now they will attempt a field goal of 64 yards. Albrecht will attempt this one. There it goes. He hit it pretty good, but it's going to be short. Arkansas gets the football back with two seconds to go in the half. Razorback fans are irate, but fortunately they're ahead because of a very costly offsides penalty call. 
Now there's two things the Lobos can do. They can let that break their back or they can go in the locker room and say, hey guys, do you realize we should be ahead? We can beat these people. It could work either way. That's exactly what you hope happens if you're a Lobo fan. You walk in and you say, yeah, this is our game. We're toe to toe with them. Keep doing what we're doing. We'll come out on top of this. Ken Hatfield is not a happy man. Remember, the Razorbacks are headed to the Liberty Bowl. They are seven and three coming into the contest. But everybody thought Arkansas was going to be an outstanding team this year. They've been a good team. Groby at the throttle with two seconds will go for it all. Downfield, nearly picked off by Randy Johnson. Academic, that's the end of the first half. So a costly penalty. Uh, the Lobos would be leading at the half or at least tied. Your score at the halftime. The Arkansas Razorbacks 16, the University of New Mexico 10. We'll be back in just a moment. Back in Little Rock, that gives you an idea of how cold it is here. The Suey Hog Blanket, one of the hot souvenir items. Razorback Mania. Now, half of the fans have gone home, and there are some people leaving right now. It is that cold and that windy. On top of that, New Mexico trails 16 to 10. They were offsides on a play that cost them the touchdown, and they could be up 17 16. And although Arkansas is going to a bowl game, and although they are 7 and 3 overall, well, people are a little upset. Yes, they are. <coughs> Here in Arkansas, as we see Danny Lahr, number 28, right there making a tackle on a replay. Defense has been very well, has done very well in the second quarter. You're right. When you're seven and three in Arkansas, people are very disappointed. Frank Boyles, the athletic director here, was asked after Hatfield's first year, what do you think of your seven and three coach? Frank Boyles said, I like him. He's got youth, he's energetic, he's a good motivator, and so forth. And then he was asked to follow up, would you like him as much if he were six and five? And he said, well, I'd like him just as much, but I'd miss him. <laughs> That's all Brecht will tee it up. That's kind of the story here. Barry Foster, the deep man for the Razorbacks, as we get ready to start the second half. But it is cooling off here, and it was cold to begin with. Albrecht kicks it off a Razorback, and it's bobbled and now fallen on, handling the football, Ken McQuay for Arkansas. Razorback start at their only home 26-yard line. Now, how important is this first series for the Razorbacks? Obviously, they were back on their heels at the end of the first half. Well, to start to regain possession or momentum of this game, they have to move the football here. Defensively, it's... Here you see Mickey Armijo from Santa Fe High School, who's already made one big play, forcing a fumble. Out of the wishbone, Arkansas. Roby, the quarterback, hands it off, and the Razorbacks go to work. Wayne Stewart blitzing forward. Torrey Edwards rode him down from behind. A gain of about seven, second and short for Arkansas. This is Lobo football on KGSW TV 14. James Rouse, who was really having a good first half, will not play in the second half because of a stomach virus. And Arkansas has been sputtering since they lost their star running back. This time, Tony Holmes will get a first down, a very close to it, out at the 36-yard line in Razorback territory. Orlando Lavelle pulled him down. Jim, you made the observation at the end of the first half that if Arkansas gets behind, you don't think they could throw. So what they're coming out here on the ground, Arkansas wants to, to keep this ball possession drive going, make the uh, Lobos try to stop their triple option offense, which they had trouble stopping in the first quarter, but they were very successful in stopping in the second quarter. It is a first and ten for Arkansas. They move the chains up. Quinn Grovey. Just a freshman. Greg Thompson, the senior quarterback, couldn't play. And this time Van Dyke 
goes out near another first and ten for Arkansas. This is the way the Razorbacks started the game. They scored on their first three possessions, and all of a sudden, the bottom fell out for them. And they're not fooling around. They're coming out with basic wishbone. Keep uh, one split end, another tight end, and just doing executing the triple locks and starting with a veer. Second and very short for Arkansas. They pitch it. And first and ten for Arkansas, Wayne Stewart that time. Brett Heber with a tackle around the heels. On the previous play tackle, which Brett Heber made, I, I almost made the comment then, Jim, I wonder how many tackles Brett Heber has today. And here is yet another right on the line of scrimmage. What a play by number 22. What a day he is having. From Anchorage, Alaska. The ball at the 49-yard line. Arkansas brings it into Lobo territory behind Tony Holmes and the sophomore refuses to go down and gets to inside the 48 in Lobo territory. Holmes is from Little Rock, so he's returning home to play in front of his hometown fans. Second down and seven for the Razorbacks who started at their own 26 yard line and have simply been running the football down the field. Brett Eber has nine tackles today and has caused a fumble. This time, Groby has it slapped away. Lobo should have an opportunity. They get it. With a fumble recovery is Clay Orison, and the Lobos will have it at the 39-yard line of Arkansas. Somebody reached around and slapped that ball free. Let's see if it's Torrey Edwards. Now, come from the back side. There's the fake. Now, he gets by. Now, watch Torrey Edwards right there. Torrey Edwards, 47, forced that fumble. And Clay Orison goes to get it. They'll mark it outside the 40 of the Razorbacks. Now, here's that opportunity the Lobos needed. There's Orison. He's always been very astute this season in getting to the loose free ball. Garrison play action fake. Looking deep. Has dump complete at the 20. Breaks a tackle. 15, 10, 5. Touchdown New Mexico. The Lobos have tied the football game. And did they make that look easy? No pressure. One fake to the running back out of the eye. Freezes the linebacker. John Duff is running free. No pressure on Garrison. Perfect throw. Even as he bounces off the safety's tackle and the linebacker overruns him, he even has a blocker downfield. Terrence Mathis is just waiting as a basketball screen. A 40-yard touchdown pass from Garrison to John Duff. And now Rick Walsh will attempt the extra point that could put the Lobos on top for the first time this afternoon. It's up. It's good. So it's 12-14 to go in the third quarter. Maybe there is a Santa Claus after all. The Lobos lead Arkansas 17-16. Back in Little Rock, Arkansas, Jim Lawwell along with Gary Ness, 12-14 to go in the third quarter. New Mexico leads for the first time, 17-16 over Arkansas. There's the drive, the 40-yard touchdown pass. Barry Garrison to John Dump, and there's your score. And Gary, who'd have thunked it? Well, <coughs> just made the comment when we were off the air. There is nothing like the feeling that's experienced on the Lobo sideline right now. If you could bottle it, you'd want to keep it forever. Foster to return the kick. Across the 20 and out to the 28-yard line. The Razorbacks will start there. Steve Halls, I believe, had an opportunity to make that tackle. He normally doesn't have to play on that return team, but Steve Holmes was hurt earlier. Jeff Hawes, excuse me, made that play. Well, now the Razorback fans on this cold and wintry day in Little Rock, with the Razorbacks going into a stiff wind, are becoming concerned. New Mexico leads it 17-16. The Razorbacks are moving it, and then Groby fumbled the football away. James Rouse is back in the game. They said he wouldn't play. Obviously, they've become concerned. He had a big first quarter, went out with a stomach virus, and gallops for a first down. He is an outstanding running back. 
I think when that scroll, when Arkansas got behind, his stomach virus suddenly disappeared, didn't it? There is a Lobo down on the field. Why the timeout is... Well, if you're Lee Corso, you get the uh, sports information director and the school photographer out, and you take a picture of the scoreboard in a hurry. <laughs> That's right. As he did in Indiana one year when he got ahead of Michigan, and they hadn't won all year. He stopped the game, took a penalty, and ran the team up in front of his scoreboard field side and took a team picture for recruiting. <laughs> That's for sure. Lee Corso would do things like that. He was, he was an innovative coach, believe me. Chris Houston did come off the field with help from Hancox and Larry Willick. <laughs> the freshman quarterback with the Razorbacks trailing. First and 10, inside his own 39-yard line. Up the middle, Van Dyke, hit and dropped, not much there. Good surge by New Mexico that time. Corey Edwards leading the way. You know, we talked about Dallas football players. There's Quinn Brovey's stats. Oh, not great, but uh, the two a, from a passing standpoint, they aren't great, but he's made some nice runs for them. Yeah, well, he simply isn't a good passer when you watch him, you can tell that. Corey Edwards is another one of those Dallas football players who's having a great day today, but for New Mexico. They run it. Get about four to the Razorbacks as they unpile out around the 44-yard line. Barry Foster on the carry that time lost the head gear. Here we see Art Martinez in the ball game because Chris Houston had to leave. Art Martinez, they thought, would have to play only if they went down to 11 defensive players, which shows that the Lobos are down to their last 11 defensive players if Art Martinez is playing, which he is. And John Bell is playing over the center a lot now. Groby going deep for Horton, throws it over his head. Penalty markers thrown as well. We'll see who it goes against. And against Arkansas, the Lobos will refuse and get the football back. Why are we seeing John Bell up over the center a lot more today, where usually McCabe had been previously all season? They are using what is called their bear defense, where they cover both the guards and the center are covered by defensive linemen. They are challenging, by employing that, they are challenging the wishbone offense to use the fullback dive. The penalty on Arkansas, and the Lobos took the penalty, which will bring up third down, and, and a little more than 10. Groby. Ready to pass, downfield with time. Fires complete to Derek Russell, and to the 25, so it would have been fourth and five, but the Lobos elected to take the penalty, and Derek Russell on the big pass from Groby, uh, who probably heard us say he couldn't pass, and he threw this one right on the money. Yeah, he did that just despite us, didn't he? And he did throw it on the money, and Derek Russell, the great sprinter for Arkansas, has a, has a, it represents a real threat for a single coverage, and Danny Lara just couldn't stay with him. And the Razorbacks are in field goal range now. Russell, a freshman. Grovey hands it off to Rouse. He dives to the 23-yard line. Or check that to the 18-yard line, I should say. A gain of about seven. Show his strength. He dragged Musa Kaniki the last five of those seven yards. Well, sometimes you get a little greedy, like on that penalty, and it comes back to haunt you. Rouse is hit and dropped for a big loss. Musa Kaniki broke up the play. The reason you couldn't hear the referee on that last play is because he mistakenly left his microphone in the locker room. So they'll have to retrieve it and wire him back up. Now Brian McCabe has plugged this hole. He's the reason that Rouse has to change his uh, change his direction and Musa Kaniki makes the tackle. But it was Brian McCabe, number 52, some of that credit. 
third and long at the logo 23 Grovey pitches to Rouse Rouse gets outside has the first down and is out of bounds at the 12 of New Mexico Rouse just has acceleration that none of the other Arkansas running backs possess exactly the point Danny Laura came a running up there to take the pitch man and looked like he was in good position but when Rouse wants to turn it on, he can accelerate. He just out sprints him to the corner here, then tries to put a move on Troy Clues. Almost does, but Troy does manage to hang on to one leg. 17-16 is the score. New Mexico leading Arkansas. That's right, leading Arkansas. Razorbacks on the move. Groby. Across the 10, down at the 9-yard line. Boy, closing in quickly, Brett Heber, who's having the game of his life this afternoon here in Little Rock. Groby seems to be limping here. Now here's the triple option. He executes first dive fake. Someone had him in on the line of scrimmage now. There's Torrey Edwards, 47, pursuing, and Brett Heber coming up from the safety spot. Quinn Groby going down. Ball is marked where his knee touches. Arkansas with a player down. 8.27 remaining in the third quarter. New Mexico 17. Arkansas 16. Razorbacks outside the Lobo 9. Second down and we'll call it 7. Well, that's Troy Clewis number 4. He's taking the pitch man. You see, he wants Rouse. That's the way you assign to play defense on the triple option. Somebody's responsible for the dive, somebody for the quarterback, and somebody for the pitch. The corner, Troy Clewis came up and tackled the pitch man. Billy Winston, the tight end wide receiver, does both, is down on the turf. For the best in entertainment, turn to KGSW TV 14 on weeknights, starting at 5 with two hours of comedy. That two hours of comedy includes Silver Spoons, Give Me a Break, Family Ties, and the Facts of Life on the great entertainer, KGSW TV 14. So Billy Winston helped off the field. New Mexico leading Arkansas, 17-16. The Razorbacks second and seven outside the nine of New Mexico. All right, here's Rouse with room, and he spins in, touchdown Arkansas. So the Razorbacks come right back, and it was that big third down and 11 play that got all of this started. And James Rouse, what a runner, what a runner. What a spin move there. He was hit by two people. Spun back to the inside, the play was designed to go outside, and that brings a deep breath or a sigh of relief to the Arkansas bench as they regain the lead. Now watch this. From Troy Clewis and Art Martinez, he bounced back to the inside behind the pursuit, and they're going for two. Well, they're going to do that. They're up by five. Here's the pitch. Here's Rouse. Dives. Didn't get it. That's a big stop for New Mexico because two field goals can put them on top and a touchdown and a two-point conversion would make it a situation where Arkansas would need a field goal to tie them. We're going to take a break. 8-13 remaining in the third quarter of this contest. Your score now, the Arkansas Razorbacks 22, New Mexico 17. <laughs> The Razorbacks, after the touchdown to take the lead, elected to go for two, but the Lobos stood him up. Triple option, they made the pitch early to Rouse, and there's John Bell, Danny Lahr, and Art Martinez converge on him to keep him out of the end zone, thus saving two points. Arkansas back on top, leading the Lobos, 22 to 17. Kendall Trainer tees it up for Arkansas. Lobos will bring this one back. Shane Hall at the 15. Straight up field, 25 into the 30. Lobos will have good field possession. 
This is how Arkansas got on the board. They started at their own 28. They went 72 yards in nine plays. Took them four minutes in a second. Rouse went in from nine. And when he's played, Arkansas has moved the football. When he's been out, they have absolutely been ineffective. Out of the shotgun, Garrison looking downfield, dumps it off to Tony Jones who drops it and takes a good hit from Ricky Williams and then shoves Williams. I really like the fact that the official didn't throw a flag there. That is a mismatch. Tony Jones goes about 165. Ricky Williams goes about 230. Tony's upset with himself first for dropping the ball and then that could have been flagged. It'd be hard to argue that he was still playing the ball in that play. That's true. Then Jones shoved him back, so I guess they figured why he tossed the flag. But might have been a penalty on Arkansas. Garrison incomplete and nearly picked off. I'm telling you, Otis Lloyd came flying in that time and nearly picked that ball off. All right, not from the shotgun this time, taking a direct snap. Shane Hall crosses to block. You see Cherico with his hands up. He threw through the hands. That might have been the reason the ball was thrown a little bit over Terrence Mathis. The Lobos led 17-16, but Arkansas has scored and now lead it 22-17. Garrison back to throw the football. With time, now scrambles and dumps it off incomplete. That time, Barry had good time, but no one ever broke open. Wayne Martin finally got in there and started to uh, obscure the vision of Garrison, and now Steve Albrecht will punt. Now, Steve Albrecht wants to, an important punt here. This is the time to show it right here. Doesn't hit it great, but gets it off. And nice coverage by the Lobos. John Bland wanted to bring it up the field, but Brett Hebert was down there immediately and he's having the game of his Lobo career. I'll tell you what, you don't even have to call tacklers. It's 22, Brad Haber is making most of them. Even on the specialty teams, great coverage by Brad Haber. This Albrecht, is how it looks for Bland right now as you can see him coming to get him. Albrecht's best punt of the night. There is Brett for, to preclude any return at all. A 36 yard punt, but he hung it up. The return was only two yards. He'd rather have that than a 48-yard punt that's returned 20. Wishbone backs behind Groovy, the freshman quarterback, starting instead of Greg Thomas, the senior who couldn't go today. Arkansas leading 22-7. Groovy downfield with it, nearly picked off. <laughs> Danny Lara had it and dropped it. He went, Danny Lara knew exactly where that ball was going and it went right through his hands. Tony Cherico, the All-American nose guard, he's concerned and the Razorbacks should be. However, they do lead 22-17 with 7.39 to go in the third quarter of play. The lights are on at War Memorial. It is that overcast. There's the wind at the back of Arkansas at this juncture. Grovey pitches to Rouse who gets outside and goes all the way to the 41 yard line. This guy looks like a man among boys every time he gets the football this afternoon. He really does. When he wants to, he can turn the corner against virtually anyone. Now Laura and Brad Heber both came running up there, excuse me, Randy Johnson came running up and but still he's able to turn the corner and got a good Oh, six or eight yard gain out of that. You will note some of the players. There's a youngster with hog fever. Those that some of the wide receivers and backs have gone to those dark socks for Arkansas. That's indicative of how cold it is. Groby just keeps it and gets the first down. They didn't need much. Steve Webster brought him down from behind. That looked like the combination of a triple option and a sneak. Lobo defense has been that the only thing they haven't done in this half is stop Rouse on those pitch plays. 
except on the two-point conversion attempt. Roby first and ten at the Razorback 44-yard line. Up the middle this time. Razorbacks send Juju Harshaw up the middle. Orvando Level gets him, but a gain of six. That's quite a name for running back, Juju Harshaw. I bet there's an interesting story behind that name. I wish I knew what it was. Make one up. <laughs> That's Quinn Grovey, his passing stats, but what he has done good for Arkansas, done well for Arkansas, excuse me, is to execute the triple option, especially pitching the ball to routes. Arkansas was trailing 17-16. They lead it 22-17. Grovey keeps and is out of bounds at the 45 of New Mexico. That should be enough for a first and 10 for Arkansas. Brett Heber with another tackle. First down, Arkansas. Brett just keeps coming and coming from his safety spot. He, the secondary is going to make the tackles if you execute the third option of the triple option. Right here he keeps it. Brad Heber once again from his inside out invert course, what some coaches call an invert course, making the stop. Lobo's down by five. Arkansas on the move at the Lobo 45. Here's the keeper. And Grovey gets to the 40 yard line. The Razorbacks will take five on each play as they continue their march down the field. Now down by five, you can't get careless, but uh, perhaps maybe try to strip the ball. It is cold, it is windy, and the Lobos will have the wind at their back in the fourth period of play. And Arkansas is doing nothing fancy. They're going with the most basic part of the wishbone offense. Just triple option right, triple option left. This is the criticism of Hatfield since he has come to Arkansas. And there's a reason for that. Here's Rouse changing direction. What a great athlete. He could be gone. The 20, the 15, the 10, 5, touchdown, Arkansas. Rouse, you really don't have to block for him. He'll make up his own mind. He's going to change and make something happen. A 40-yard touchdown run, but not to belabor the point. Because Arkansas is so predictable, Hatfield is getting criticized a lot by many Arkansas fans. They want to see the ball up top one. All right, Royals threw it a lot. And this play was designed to go to the left of the screen or to Rouse's right. And he was spun around in the backfield by, by Brian McCabe and then turned around and ran behind the pursuit. And no one, as you can see, even got within reaching distance of it. Trainer bangs and brew. That's a big touchdown for Arkansas. 540 to go in the third quarter. The Arkansas Razorbacks 29. New Mexico 17. We'll be right back. the third quarter of play, the Lobos led Arkansas 17-16. It's now 29-17 Arkansas, and that's the major reason right there. James Rouse left when Arkansas was up 16 to nothing with stomach virus. He's now back in. He's rushed 10 times for 161 yards. Jim Lawwell here along with Gary Ness, and the Lobos will have to move the football and score right here to try to uh, reaffirm themselves in the football game. That's exactly right, as we see some other quarterbacks for Arkansas warming up. I think that Roby has been limping the last possession, and we may see a new Arkansas quarterback. Shane Hall brings it across the 25, and with extra effort, Shane will be dropped around the 28. The ball is free, but I believe they'll rule that Shane Hall was down. Reggie Hall made the tackle on Shane Hall. As you say, Jim, it's as though Rouse just took over control of the game. Once they got once they got behind the Lobos, he has been unstoppable. There is the drive. 68 yards, seven plays. Rouse with a 40-yard run. Rouse is having the best day of his college career. Penalty marker thrown at the line of scrimmage. That right there. One of the Razorback injured. Five 
I will double check, but I believe that is Greg Thomas, the quarterback who is with, we saw on the sideline with crutches. Running play, Reggie Rogers gets outside with it, puts down the shoulder pad and the helmet and pops out to around the 35 yard line. Otis Lloyd knocking him out of bounds and that was Greg Thomas who will miss his final game as a senior in Little Rock and of course uh, that's not a happy situation for any senior. Shane Hall heading up on the isolation play leading block for Reggie Rogers who bounces to the outside and gets a nice 10 yard gain. Mathis in motion to the top of the screen. Second and four, Garrison to pass. Downfield for Mathis, incomplete. Ball is thrown out of bounds down the sideline in front of the Lobo bench. Incomplete. Mathis went in motion back across the formation. We were hoping that the defense would lose him into that sideline. He'll note the Arkansas cheerleaders have donned the uh, warm gear. It's no longer bare-legged out there. It's amazing they made it through the first half. Out of the shotgun, the Lobos a key third down. Garrison in trouble, fires it incomplete. Wayne Martin was applying the pressure again. He's been extremely active defensively for Arkansas. So the Razorbacks will get the football back, and they lead 29-17. to Wayne Martin has been a problem for the Lobo offensive line. He's the one guy, more than Tony Cherico, who's been forcing the play. Albrecht gets this one pretty good into the win. Bland, with a fair catch, fumbles the football. New Mexico may have it. They'll sort it out. Now Arkansas retains possession of the football. Bland found a way to get it back. I don't know how, because it looked like he was going to lose the handle on it. I think it was divine providence to put that ball under him when he fell. Look who was down there to wrestling for the ball. Number 22, Brett Heber. Heber's having the game of his life. Just a sophomore. 32-yard punt into the wind for Albrecht. You know, Jim, when you make your all-opponents team at the end of the year, I'll That's bet you Arkansas Razorbacks put number 22 Brett Heber on their all conference or on their all opponents team the new quarterback is Jim Simpson a six foot 181 pound sophomore out of Searcy Arkansas downfield and incomplete is Searcy or Simpson out of Searcy hammers it down <laughs> or Simpson out of Searcy out of Simpson whatever I, I had a uh, uncle once who always used to say that Happiness in life meant being on a springboard to Searcy, Arkansas. So maybe that's the way it is when Simpson goes home. He always had to think about going to live there. Well, in the lineup comes number two, Derek Russell, and he has the blazing speed, and he's coming to the bottom of the screen there. Simpson to throw it. Little dump-off pass to Rouse, and Rouse will suffer the consequences of staying up for quite a while. Maybe too long that time. Not that much of a gainer. About three yards that time for the Razorbacks. But when the, when the ball gets in the hands of number 35, Rouse, the adventure begins. Uh, Simpson's going to throw back here as an outlet pass. Troy Clewis forces him inside, but look at all the people he runs through here before they finally bring him down. There's Fred Heber. Big afternoon for the Lobo sophomore. Simpson scrambling and sack. Musa Kanicki drops him at the 30-yard line. Kanicki putting on a little bit of a show. Just under four minutes remaining in the third quarter. But he ought to shake the hand of number 99, John Bell, because it was Bell who forced him into Kanicki. Bell was the first guy through, but Musa wrapped him up very well. Now watch this. Watch number 99, John Bell, being held, by the way. He's the one who forced him up into the pocket where Kaniki could grab him. 
one thing that's been pleasant about this game is there have not been a lot of penalty markers from 11, or excuse me, 10-man rush whistles, and as we say that, penalty marker thrown over by the Lobo sideline. Twenty-nine, seventeen, Arkansas. Three and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. There's the Lobo head coach, Mike Shepard. Now remember, the wind is strong. The Lobos will have it at their back in the fourth quarter. Now here's Ken Hatfield. He's hot. He can't be happy with the way Arkansas has played, but you got to credit the Lobos, who really defensively after the first quarter have played pretty stingy football. Heber has 16 tackles and still got a lot of football left. Low end over end kick. Mathis grabs it. Lobos will have good field position. Terrence Jitterbugs and is smashed around the 38-yard line. So many times, Gary, you've always said when you're going to return a kick, take it and head up field. Don't start scampering wide. When you do, that's what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Watch the converging on Terrence Mathis here. Oh. But he pops up as he has done so often this year. Terrence Mathis proves very, very tough. Very durable. The Lobos have it in good field position just inside their own 40. We can call it the 39 and a half yard line to the hash mark to the top of your screen. 29-17 Arkansas leading it. Early in the third quarter, the Lobos led 17-16. Arkansas led at the half 16-10. Garrison with time. Downfield picked up. Anthony Cooney picks it off on the sideline for Arkansas. Cooney, really the ball was probably thrown poorly and he went and got it. Well, I don't understand this because there's no pump fake, nothing to this side. All he does is look at Al Owens, who is running down the left sideline, but Cooney's waiting for the ball. Uh, I just don't quite understand this one. He had three, re three wide receivers in the game, two at the left of the screen, but never even gave them so much as a glance. Simpson, the quarterback. Here's Anthony Cooney. Here's Rouse weaving across the 45 and out to the 46, perhaps a 47-yard line. We'll call it second down and about four for Arkansas. James Rouse is from Parkview High School here in Little Rock. And he's a teammate, high school teammate, of Ricky Williams, the great linebacker for Razorbacks, who have been a problem for the Lobos all afternoon. Danny Lara lining up down at the bottom against Derek Russell. Jim Simpson, the sophomore quarterback. Running the option, heads up field, spins, fumbles a football out of bounds, fortunately for the Razorbacks. They'll be shy of the first and ten by a yard. Simpson was carrying that football out in front of him, and it was knocked free. Troy Cluis applying the hit that knocked the football free. If you're a triple option quarterback, now let's watch this, and you think you're going to make the pitch, but you don't, you should pull it back in. Now he keeps the ball out there. There it is. Yep. And Marvin Lewis, the linebacker coach, makes the good recovery there. <laughs> it was Brett Heber's hit that knocked the ball free. Clueless in on the play as well. Up the middle, Rouse. First and ten and more. Into Lobo territory around the 44-yard line. So Arkansas, since the Lobos jumped up 17-16, basically has taken control of the football game, leading at 29-17 and moving the football again. Well, they're and that man's been the reason right there. James Rouse, and you run behind 72, Freddie Childress there. It was in your screen earlier, 6'4", 348 pounds. With a great back like Rouse, you just give him the ball and go straight ahead against the Lobos. And they may stop you, but they're not going to stop you completely. If you have patience, you can march down the field. Little counter to Rouse. Spins past tacklers and dives to the 36-yard line. About a yard shy of yet another Arkansas, first and ten. John Bland was the quarterback this time. He's the third one we've seen for Arkansas. 
Now, if you want to see a spin move executed well, he just spun right inside of Steve Webster. That Rouse is some running back. I think he's as good as we've seen this year, including John Harvey and some of the great ones we've seen in the WAC. Well, one thing he doesn't do is seem to cough the football up. He uh, handles it pretty well. Jim Kessinger shaken up for Arkansas coming off the field. It'll be second and a yard for Arkansas at the 36 in New Mexico Territory. John Bland, the quarterback. Bland keeps it. Heads up field, breaks a tackle and dies to the 29-yard line. Now Bland also returns punts and kicks at times. You can see why he's got that quick acceleration up the field. He ran right out of Brett Hebert's tackle. Brett had him close to the line of scrimmage, but he managed to spin out of it and get the extra yardage for the first down. Bland is a junior, as you saw. He is from Knoxville, Tennessee. Just stay on the interstate and head east. Little running play doesn't net much for Arkansas. Barry Foster. Maybe a couple of yards. Barry Foster on a carry. It'll be second and seven, we'll call it, for Arkansas. 42 seconds and counting remaining in the third quarter. There's Barry Foster. Foster is a freshman. Uh, Arkansas using a number of freshman players at their skilled positions. Exactly. They're deep at the skilled positions. You see those fresh jerseys come in there with those linemen that have been in the entire ball game. There's Derek Russell at the bottom. He's the sprinter. Bland pitches to Rouse, who heads outside. Stiff arms Fred Eber. Or Danny Laura rather and goes to the 21 they'll be two yards shy of the first down and this is a big play by Danny Lara he's all alone one-on-one -on -one with Rouse there is one move and he didn't take that move you see that's a great tackle that is a great tackle by Danny Lara John Bland who's quarterbacking now for Arkansas is a quarterback on there too deep so he's versatile we're going to take a break after three quarters. Your score, Arkansas 29, New Mexico 17. We'll be right back. Back at War Memorial Stadium, Jim Lawwell along with Gary Ness as we start the fourth quarter. We flip-flop the teams. Arkansas has it at the 21-yard line of New Mexico, leading it by 12. Little dive off tackle will get the first down for Arkansas. Barry Foster picks it up. They'll mark it. On the tackle. Well, they move it back a little bit. They might be short. They're going to bring out the chains and measure. It looked like he had it easily, and then they marked it back. He skidded on the artificial turf there, forward enough to get the first down. And it's a very important mark right here, although they are in four down territory. If it is short, and it appears it just slightly is, Arkansas will certainly go for it. Mm -hmm. Having right. said certainly go for it, that means they'll kick a field goal, right? <laughs> well, they got a real good kicker, and they're ahead by 12. If they don't make it, the Lobos have the wind at their back the entire fourth quarter. They are going for it, it appears. Fourth and less than a yard. Bland hands off to Rouse. Rouse trying to get outside, does 15-10 into the nine-yard line. It'll be first and goal to go there, and a late hit by the Lobos will move it to around the four-yard line, where it'll be first and goal. Rouse has been a thorn on the side of the Lobos, and a little bit of the frustration showing there. This is a gamble. When you get the ball this deep on a plate that doesn't challenge the line of scrimmage if you only need a foot, but they have the right guy carrying it. Rouse is just, there you see the hit out of bounds by Brad Heber. And that's the flag. 
considerably out of bounds. But they gave it to the right guy. He just has such acceleration. You can't believe his ability to turn the corner on you. 15 runs for 196 yards. And he didn't play two quarters of the football game. That's right. They're going to mark it at the four, just outside the four of New Mexico. There are the official numbers, 196 yards, 15 rushes for James Rouse. Goal to go for Arkansas. Rouse dives, touchdown Razorbacks. That's a big touchdown for Arkansas at the 14-22 mark, and that'll put Rouse over the 200-yard mark rushing. All right, now here's the power play out of the wishbone. Two backs leading in front of the ball carrier, and he literally leaps the pile. The hole wasn't there. He just went over it. What a performance by 35. James Russ. The kick. It's good. So the two teams will head up the field. 14-22 remaining. A big touchdown for Arkansas. And they lead to Mexico. 35 to 17 as Rouse dives in. There's your score, Arkansas leading it. Still a long time to go, 14-22 remaining in the fourth quarter. We talked about Rouse's exploits rushing today over 200 yards and the last touchdown run, but he also has four touchdowns rushing to his credit this afternoon. Trainer tees it up. Or Chuck did. Alan Meacham will kick it this time. The backup kicker out of Flagstaff, Arizona. Hits it pretty good into the wind. And Mathis gets it at the five. Terrence out to around the 23-yard line. And then wrestled around with as the ball might have come free for a moment. Going to take a look at the touchdown one more time. James Rouse has 16 rushes for 200 yards. That's a, a pretty smooth 12 and a half yards a carry average, too. Tells you how what he's how important he has been to the Arkansas offense. This is how the Razorbacks took control of the game with a big touchdown, a drive of 59 yards. Remember, New Mexico led 17-16 briefly, so the Razorbacks have posted 20 straight points. Shane Hall tries it up the middle and is stacked up after a gain of a yard. Wayne Martin, Tony Cherico, David Schell, that whole defensive front in there. And none of those players you just mentioned, I don't believe, anticipated playing this late in the game, Jim. No, the Lobos have fought gallantly. Garrison looking deep. Now he's in trouble and simply dumps it off incomplete. Threw it in the area of John Duff. Eric Whited was over there on the coverage. Perry seemed to have enough time there. He retreated twice, which is what quarterbacks do when they want to set up the screen pass, but there was no screen there. Nice play by Whitehead covering John Duff. Third down and nine for New Mexico. Garrison operates out of the shotgun this time. Looking deep downfield, incomplete. He wanted Mike Henderson, the freshman, out around a 42-yard line. Eric Bradford was over on the coverage, and the Lobos will have to punt. Still a long time to go, 13 and a half minutes remaining in the football game. From the shotgun, Scott Howard and Shane Hall backs there to protect him. Retreats, now that's a 12-yard drop when you line up four or five yards deep. Bland to return the punt. Cuts up field with blocking. Nice little cut there across midfield and driven down from behind at the 45-yard line. So Bland, who has played defense, played quarterback and return kicks, heads towards the sideline. Fred Heber with another tackle. Very versatile player there, number 16, Bland. 
Oliver. Very big guy. Now we get to see the end zone view. First man down is Clay Orison, 49. He gets turned out. Cuts inside. Shane Hall there. Around Mickey Armijo. Brett Heber runs him down from behind. Razorback starting at the Lobo 45-yard line. Bland came to the sideline, but he'll be the quarterback. Counter play. Wayne Stewart with room. Out of bounds around the 35-yard line. This might be a long fourth quarter for New Mexico because it seems like fatigue is really becoming a factor. Yes, they are becoming weary. Now, they're using misdirection plays now, which uh, against a weary team generally work. Brett Heber from his deep safety position, once again having to make the tackle. David Ziegler has checked in defensively for the Lobos. Planned second in less than a yard. Right up the middle with Juju Harshaw, and Harshaw hard to bring down. Takes it inside the 30 to the 29. First and 10 there, Art Martinez riding down Harshaw. John Bell in there as well. David Ziegler, as you said, checked in. Now, Art Martinez is playing. He was, he was only to play if they absolutely had to use him, which they absolutely had to do. David Ziegler is playing a linebacker, and he is normally a defensive end. So they have one person who they didn't want to have to play and another playing out of position now on the Lobo defense. Bland rolls and fires. Russell dropped it. He was open, had it, and dropped it at the 16-yard line. You know, Arkansas is leading this game 36-17, but they were 35-and-a-half-point favorites, and the crowd is still rather hostile. They want them to go in and get a couple of touchdowns and make this a blowout. And, you know, i got to give credit for a guy who's listed on the two-deep as a cornerback. Come in here, he's the third quarterback that they've used. There's Childress, he kind of blocks the, you have to use a wide angle lens to get around him. See this, but John Bland has done an excellent job. He's the job Arkansas <laughs> addition of the fridge. <laughs> Bland to throw again, incomplete. It's looking downfield for Skip Thompson and uh, never materialized. Safety blitz with, guess who was applying the pressure on the quarterback there? Number 22, Brett Heber, who was blitzing from his safety spot. He with Torrey Edwards applying the pressure. Kendall Trainer, the place kicker, has got the tee out in case they can't execute here. He would kick into the wind. Big third down play for the defense. Jack Stanton is shuffling things up. They're not playing the same way each down, that's for sure. Land rolling, pump fakes downfield. He has Russell. Oh, tipped away by Randy Johnson. Two things there. First of all, the ball might have been a tad underthrown, and second of all, a great recovery by Randy Johnson. They decided Arkansas did to take advantage of the previous play. They thought they could get deep with a pump fake. See, there's the pump fake. Now to lob it over him. But the ball is lobbed so high that Randy Johnson, number 29, recovers to the ball and knocks it down. Well, you talk about Bland. They're not going to kick the field goal. They'll go for it. You talk about Bland. That the fact he's not a bad-looking quarterback. What he is is an outstanding athlete. Well, he certainly is. Probably Bland played the wishbone offense in high school. I'm guessing that, too. He'll throw on fourth down. In trouble. Scrambles, bobbles, runs. He's got blockers. That Lobo stop him. Way short. Closed in well. Troy Clewis with a nice open field tackle. So the Lobos have stopped Arkansas on fourth down and will get the football with 12-16 remaining and trailing by a score of 36-17. to Big fourth down play by the defense. It looked for just a moment when Bland pulled that ball down and started to reverse his field and run to the top of the screen that he might break it. But Troy Clewis made a nice open field tackle. I wonder how Mike Shepard would like to have a second string cornerback who could run back kicks with the best of them and play quarterback in a pinch. Here's Mathis on a little look in and he gets about seven yards of the 35. I think he would like something like that. Terrence Mathis catching that look in pass. 
I like to see him catching those deep throws. Here it is. Short retreat. Otis Lloyd over the top. Garrison on second down. Here's Mathis. And he heads upfield, gets the first down, and pays the price at the 43-yard line as Otis Lloyd and Ricky Williams converge to drop Terrence Mathis to the turf. Now that, those have it first and 10 at their own 44. Now that particular play was a big breaker for the Lobos early in the season. Terrence Mathis coming across the field underneath the linebackers, catching the ball, and then getting what he could. But, but defenses late in the season are looking for that, so the linebackers are looking for him. Garrison is the all-time total offense leader for New Mexico, and so it looks like the Lobos will probably finish nothing in 11 this year. Howard dropped on first down. Didn't get anything out of that. Ricky Williams streaking in. But in a year when the Lobos probably won't win a game, and in Garrison's senior year, he will break the total offense record at New Mexico, and uh, that'll be something that uh, he can remember. You bet he can. That's a, I, that's a remarkable job by a first-year starter, even though it is his senior year, and a lot of credit of that goes to Steve Fairchild, the young quarterback coach at UNM, as well as Mike Shepard, who has worked a lot with Perry those viewers this afternoon who saw the interview with Mike Shepard at halftime, Mike elaborated on that and said it's too bad Barry's a senior. I'd like to have him a couple more years. Mathis over the middle complete and dropped at the 35-yard line in Arkansas territory. There you see why. Barry can throw with the best of them if Grant at the time. Now he has the time to get his pass away here. David Lolly at the bottom of the screen blocking on Martin who's been giving him so much problem. Good block by David Lolly. So the Lobos on the move. Still time, but they need three touchdowns to get the lead. Dumps it off to Shane all in the flat and Shane is dropped right around the line of scrimmage. Good job that time defensively by Arkansas. They read that well. It's one thing the Lobos have not really had a lot of success with this year is setting up those little dump-offs and those little screens. Tony Cherico is out to make the stop, and when your nose guard makes the stop on the screen pass, that means that he was looking for it. That means when the quarterback drops back, he's looking for a, a, a back slipping off into the flat, and he's going to go out there with him, and that's who made the stop. High backs behind Garrison, second and ten. Downfield, Mathis could be gone. Across the ten and out of the six-yard line. Terrence needed a block and couldn't get one. That pass downfield has been open all day long. Every time the Lobos get in an eye formation and fake the, the running back play to the tailback and drop back, he either hits John Duff or the split end Terrence Mathis, in this case crossing the middle, and he's wide open. 28-yard pass from Garrison to Mathis, and Barry has to be approaching the 300-yard mark passing this afternoon here in Little Rock. Into the end zone for Mathis. Touchdown. Boy, the Lobos didn't fool around that time. They took it right down the field. 36-23 the score now, and look for the Lobos to go for two. Terrence Mathis with the kind of game that he had the first half of the season, which elevated him to the top of the stats nationally and receiving and, and all-purpose yardage. This is the alley-oop throw. Line up inside on the hash mark. Give yourself a lot of room, and he drops it over. That's, a, that's like a three-point shot in basketball. Great catch by Mr. Mathis. With the touchdown pass to Mathis Garrison, he clips the 300-yard mark. He's at 303 this afternoon. And We'll have time to add to those numbers. Lobos go for two now. Owens and Mathis. And Henderson flanked to the top of your screen. Garrison looking for one of them as he backs straight up. Dumps it off to Mathis and they get the two-point conversion. So the Lobos have climbed back in the football game with 9-16 remaining. It's Arkansas 36, New Mexico. 25, and we'll be back to see what unfolds. It's not over yet. To take on the Huskies in a Saturday afternoon game that is live. Barry Foster back deep for Arkansas. Steve Albrecht to tee it up for the Lobos, who have scored and trail the Razorbacks 36 to 25. 
They squib it. Bobbled, Arkansas brings it up the field. Tony Holmes breaking tackles, dives out to around the 43-yard line. Tackled by Charleston Fobbs on that play. Here's the replay of the two-point conversion. Now, what Memphis did was line up to the extreme right top of the screen, cross the field, and it's just awfully hard to, to stay with somebody and go through, run through the wash, as they say, and stay with the receiver crossing in the end zone. 72-yard drive, culminated with a touchdown pass to Mathis. One of the pretty faces in the crowd here this afternoon. This is Lobo Football on your great entertainer, KGSW TV 14. Rouse to run it with room across midfield and dives to the Lobo 49. Seems like every time that James Rouse touches a football, he's got at least seven yards. And, you, and your heart seems to skip a beat if you're if you're thinking defense in that situation. Every time 35 touches it, uh oh, how are we going to shut him off? Don't let him out. Don't over pursue this and this. It, it's really, uh, it's really tough stopping somebody that great. Tony Cherico there on the phone to the pizza man. The game's almost <laughs> over. Rouse heading wide. One tackle broken. Another. And out of bounds around the 40. It'll be first and 10 Arkansas there. The Lobos just continue to misread him when he heads outside. He just outruns the pursuit every time. It it's just doesn't seem possible that a human being can turn the corner every time like that with just a little burst of, of acceleration. Look at those numbers. Yeah, a day to remember, 215 yards, and he's far from finished right now. Razorbacks at the New Mexico 40-yard line. Tony Holmes uh, diving for about five, just shy of the 35-yard line. Steve Webster bringing down Holmes. You know, you have to ask yourself, <laughs> why isn't James Rouse leading the nation in rushing in the performance he's had here today? What, why in the world wouldn't he be leading the nation? He has a lot of natural ability and talent. Running play with Rouse. Rouse about a yard shy of the first down at the 31 of New Mexico. Clock ticking away, 7.45 and counting remaining. Power play, now he scored at least one touchdown today on this very one. Brian McCabe grits on him from behind, but he's gonna get at least five yards with that hole. Third and short. Groby back in at quarterback. Fumble and the Lobos have it. Troy Clewis recovers. Well, a quick score here. And you got an opportunity to win. And it becomes awfully tense again, just as at the end of the first half. Troy Clewis, another big play on defense. Congratulated by number 22. I, I can't remember a defensive safety playing a better game than Brett Heber has done today. There's your score, time remaining, plenty of time. Give on the dive, Musa Kaniki makes the contact, forces the fumble. Clay Orison reaching for it, Troy Clewis recovering. Garrison downfield, incomplete, tipped away, good coverage that time. Otis Lloyd was there. Al Owens was the intended receiver. Now Owens is pulling up at about a seven yard hook pattern. Coming back for the ball. Ball's too hot. How about that little play that the Lobos got that quick touchdown on with the offsides that was called back at the end of the first half. We may see it again right here. This is the formation, the one back offense, although Barry is in the shotgun here. Well, they dump it off to Mathis at the line of scrimmage, but there wasn't much there. Terrence probably smartly just slapped it to the artificial turf. Terrence fakes the play to the outside. Now he's just going to come back across the middle. This is a middle screen. 
got Howard out in front to block, but it just isn't there, as you say, Jim. Good camera work there. Out of the shotgun, Garrison on third and ten, downfield for Henderson, caught at the 49-yard line. Lobos, first and ten right there. Garrison. This is some catch by the true freshman, Mike Henderson. And out pattern, now he's trailing behind Al Owens, who is printed downfield to take the cornerback with him. There's a nice grab there. <laughs> I don't believe I've seen Garrison throw the ball better all year. He has just been on the money today. He really has. That ball had to be on the money. Here's a guy that spent three years sitting around. Running play won't go anywhere. Scott Howard suffers the consequences. Now we're down to six and a half minutes to go, so you want to pick the pace up a bit now and get down and get a score. You trail by 11. You need two scores. You need two, but this one in particular, you want to get it the seven points out of. The crowd was a good one. Many have left. It is so cold and windy here. Midfield, second down for Garrison. Over the middle, overthrown. John Duff, the intended receiver. There was one that wasn't on the mark, but I'm not sure but what Barry didn't throw that deliberately over the receiver because he would have had to drop it in front of the safety and over the linebackers. There were two linebackers in position as Ed Lambert consults with... Mike Shepard, the head coach, is Barry Garrison, 11, comes over. Now the Lobos are going to use one of their timeouts with six minutes and two seconds to go, trailing 36-25, facing third down and nine at midfield as Mike Shepard talks it over with Barry Garrison. Okay, this ought to give us what I was talking about. Can we see the linebackers? You see who he's... Yeah, there he is, trying to drop it over. To get the ball to Duff, he would have had to get it over 31 under the safety. That's, that's pretty tough to do. All right. Tonight, on the Saturday Night Late Movie, Candace Bergen is kidnapped by Sean Connery in The Wind and the Lion, a high adventure and romance in the deserts of Asia tonight at 11 on KSG, KGSW TV 14. I was just amazed that Candace Bergen <laughs> is going to be mad because Sean Connery kidnapped her. I thought he was a sex symbol of some type. Garrison downfield complete and out of bounds. Terrence Mathis at the 32 of Arkansas. And was that a tough throw? Oh, no, wait a minute. Oh, no. Oh, he caught that ball way in bounds. Well, PU, I say. Well, if we dare see a replay of this, we will. And this is from the end zone. Let's see if he has both feet in or if he gets... All you have to have is one foot in in college. One, two... Both feet were in. Receiver was juggling the pass, but when he went out of bounds, did not have control of the football. The explanation is that he was juggling the pass. Do you think he's juggling the pass? Well, he might have juggled it for a moment, but he had control of it with one foot in. Another angle. Here it is. He'll bobble it, but he gets it back. Lobos call another timeout on fourth down. They'll have only one left now. 5.56 to go in the football game. Well, you try not to let something like a call like that bother you. That's what they're shaking their heads about there. <clears throat> There's nothing you can do to change that. What you have to do now is you have one down left to keep this drive going. Fourth and nine. Garrison conferring. Send it at them again. Go get it again. One of the things, one of the axioms in coaching is if they don't stop it, you continue doing it. 
Now, uh, end zone people are taking a look at us from the great crate in the sky, and here we are. Here we are. The sun is blinding. I have the shades on. <laughs> Gary Ness does not have shades on. And there's our man in the crane. Now, that's a duty I wouldn't like. He gets hazard pain. Really something else. Colorado can. Of course, on the coldest day in the history of Little Rock for 1988, 87, I should say, we're outdoors. Fourth down and a big fourth down. We'll call it nine at midfield for Barry Garrison. Downfield. Picked off. Picked off. Oh, and it was Chris Hunter, a sophomore defensive back. He did the Lobos a favor in that he gave them another 12 or 15 yards. Had that been incomplete, line of scrimmage would have moved up about 15 yards. He was trying to go back to Garris, to Mathis, and this time, rather than running the out pattern, he was running an in pattern. There are the turnovers this afternoon. The Razorbacks with five, New Mexico with three. There's a man who just pulled down that interception. Diving play for Foster out to the 40-yard line. Razorbacks content to let the clock run down now. 5.33 and counting remaining in the football game. Defensively at this point, and we see John Bland back as the quarterback again, Jim. At this point, you would expect to see nothing but the basic wishbone inside stuff. I wouldn't even ask my quarterback to pitch it. I would say keep it or give on the dive. Lobos read that perfectly. Or Vandal Lavelle. Keep diving in and I fashion to break up the running play. Third down for the Razorbacks. Big Orlando jumps right into the guard center gap. Went right for the fullback on the dive play. Derek Russell, the freshman, checks into the ball game. Here's Foster with a big hole, and it's bye-bye, baby. 20-10, touchdown, Arkansas. He read the dive perfectly. John Glenn read the dive perfectly for a 61-yarder. Only a freshman, Barry Foster, gallops 61 yards, and the Razorbacks move it to 42. And does he show the speed? Steve Webster up from his middle linebacker spot overran the play, trying to defend against the quarterback, Keith. Barry Foster, he really expands the difference there. A jubilant freshman. Arkansas driving the nails in the coffin, leading at 42-25 now. Officially, they'll call it a 60-yard touchdown run. 4.24 to go. For some reason, Arkansas had trouble getting the kicker into the game, unless they were considering going for two. Well, it is delay in the game. So Trainer will move it back a little bit, which probably doesn't bother him. There's Barry Foster with a 60-yard touchdown run. That has pretty much wrapped up the contest for Arkansas. The kick is good for 24 to go in the football game. Your score, the Arkansas Razorbacks 43. New Mexico, 25. There's your score with four minutes and 24 seconds to go in the football game. Lobos, who led early in the third quarter, 17-16. Had ideas of an upset. The back-breaking play came on the last score, the 60-yard touchdown run by Barry Foster. Again, we'll see the backup kicker, Alan Meacham, tee it up.
Mathis is going to fake the handoff to Owens, head up the field now with blocking. Could have it broken and driven out of bounds around midfield. Closing in was Ben Floor, and he was the only thing keeping from Terrence Mathis taking that thing back all the way. Indeed he was. When you, <coughs> as we watch this run back from the end zone, now Mathis will break it towards the middle and, or, and actually fake a handoff here to his left. Now towards the middle, you see the wedge jumps outside and Barry Floor, number 38, who's assigned the safety man. Now he's asked not to run down the field quickly. Here's another ex uh, angle on the previous touchdown run by Foster. He just protracts the difference there. His speed is so good. Garrison will throw it. Downfield, complete to duck. Around the 42-yard line in Arkansas territory, a yard shy of the first down. This is how the Razorbacks pretty much nailed this one down. Three plays, the big 60-yard run by Foster. It only took a minute and 25 seconds. 3.46 and counting, remaining in the football game now. But it didn't take him a minute and 25 seconds to run that 60 yards. It certainly did not. Garrison over the middle. Mathis complete. At the 26-yard line. So the Lobos are moving down to strike and score. Mathis has had a big afternoon, as has Barry Garrison. So they'll both finish up the season for the kind of afternoon you'd like to have, but the one thing they won't have this season is a win. Arkansas on the verge of going to 8-3. They have two games left, Hawaii next week, and then the Liberty Bowl versus Georgia. Down deep for Mathis, incomplete. That's good coverage that time, downfield by Ben Floor. Mathis is shaken up in the end zone. Ben Floor defending, there is an official final. Ben's been a long afternoon for Ben Floor, trying to cover, this is the play was called back. It was the touchdown reception that was called back just before the conclusion of the first half. With Garrison's last completion, he has passed for 345 yards this afternoon. Mathis has had a big afternoon as well, but he's down and shaken up in a corner of the end zone. For Mathis, big afternoon, 13 receptions, 208 yards. See if this angle gives us any indication. Mathis, of course, has had an injured ankle this season. Caused him to miss two ball games, one completely and one just a token appearance. Nice hand from the remaining Arkansas Razorback fans here. Well, they see a lot of football here. They know a fine player when they see one. They sure do. And this number 15 has put on quite a performance. Looks like he got that ankle caught underneath him, Gary. And rolled over. He's walking now. He's maybe back. Well, that is good. In addition to that ankle, he suffered a broken nose and had nose... Uh, and had had surgery on that broken nose all in the middle of the season. I thought you were going to say he had brain <laughs> surgery. <laughs> I almost said that. <laughs> oh. Okay, very Garrison to throw it. Dumps it off incomplete. Eric Bradford and Reggie Hall were there and Val Owens had been able to hang on to it. Third down and 10 for New Mexico at the 26-yard line of Arkansas. 3.13 remaining, Arkansas leading it 43-25. A lot of these seniors came into this game wanting to play respectable. I think they've done at least that in their last ball game. I think they scared Arkansas as many of the fans... Mathis is back in there. Garrison is in trouble. Downfield, tipped away and incomplete. That'll bring up a fourth down for New Mexico at the 26 of Arkansas. Barry that time was waiting for Mathis to break free, but he simply just would not have enough time. 
So this is fourth down. It could be the last play of the 87th season for the Lobos unless they can connect here. So Ed Larson, junior college transfer quarterback who is redshirted this year. He will have two years of remaining eligibility. You saw him signaling the play into Barry. There's Barry's numbers. What an afternoon. Downfield for Mathis. Incomplete. Really could have been picked off. Eric Bradford a bit upset, but probably the smart thing to do is to knock it down. Because the Razorbacks will get it at their own 26 to 59 to go in the game. Eric Bradford from Paris, Texas. Do you know there was a Paris, Texas? Oh, yes. Uh, Ricky Wright, who pitched for the Dukes a couple of years, and then with the Dodgers and the Texas Rangers was from Paris. And he had that draw, you know, and he'd tell his people to say, where are you from? Sal, from Paris. <laughs> Texas, that is. One of the greatest receivers in the history of football is from Paris. Do you know who that is? That's right. The man who coaches the New England Patriots. Raymond, Raymond Barry. Barry. And his dad, the high school coach here for years. Hey, you're not going to catch me on that one. You're pretty sharp, pretty sharp there, Lola. They tell us now, we have a note, this just in, there was a movie called Paris, Texas once made. But it wasn't really about Paris, Texas. No. It was about California. And we don't have time to explain that to you. Razorbacks ran it. Time turning on the 87th season for New Mexico. A dive play stacked up Juju Harshaw. Juju Harshaw carry. Orlando Lavelle greeted Juju. There's a couple of the hardy ones left. It is cool. Believe it or not, the stadium was pretty much full when this whole thing started, but they have trickled out as things have progressed this afternoon. Many left at halftime. I don't know what because of the cold or because they were disgusted, uh, because the Lobos were so close. Or... Probably a combination of both. Go home, pick it up on a satellite. Simpson to throw, incomplete. He wanted Scott Thompson down around the 37-yard line and couldn't get it to him. Had to bring up fourth down now for Arkansas. A minute 36 to go, and they will send on the punting team. They lead it handily, 43 to 25. There's Fred Heber, who is the Metro Mobile player of the game. A career high in tackles and a great afternoon, although Mathis and Garrison both shown well as well. Outstanding performances in this game. Both sides of the football. Whoops. Mathis didn't get the punt. Loose ball. Terrence hit. Arkansas going to get a touchdown out of this. Touchdown Razorbacks. Nope. They're going to rule it down at the 10-yard line. Can't advance a fumble in college football. I guess that was ruled a fumble. Or a muff. A muff. There we go. A muff. Ball is kicked a somewhat line drive kick. This isn't trainer kicking here. That's a, you know, it's like an, a center fielder. There's a low line drive coming at you. You take a risk by trying to catch it in the air. Terrence certainly took that risk, but it didn't pay off. Yeah, it looked kind of like it hit the Arkansas player after it hit Terrence. So it'd be called a muff, and the ball is dead inside the 11. Now, Arkansas, there is a Metro Mobile player of the game, Brett Eber, back of the action. Simpson, heads up field, and is dropped at the nine yard line. Art Martinez was the one who forced Simpson back up into where Brett Heber once again makes the tackle. He's not finished today. I don't know how many downs Arkansas can run off in the final minute, but Brett Heber will have as many opportunities to tackle as they have to run plays. They've got 16 seconds to get the playoff. Lobos jumped off sides but got back, and now Arkansas jumps off sides. Arkansas was trying to milk that play clock down, I believe. I think they were. Now 
There's no point in another touchdown. It'd give you 50, but I don't know what it would matter. The Arkansas player to cross the line of scrimmage was Big Todd Jones, 289 pounds. Now he's a backup. Yeah, he's a backup. He's just a backup. He, well, actually, he backs up Jim Mabry on that side, but he's no Freddie Childress at 348. Nope. Second down for Arkansas at the 15 goal to go. And here's the running play up the middle. They just let the clock run out. The football game should be over. We're down to 15 seconds remaining in the football game. Arkansas will run one more play. Little roll out, quarterback, keeper. And that'll do it. The football game is over. Your final score, the Arkansas Razorbacks 43, the New Mexico Lobos 25. There's Mike Shepard, the Lobo head coach. He'll finish his first season without a win. Ken Hatfield and the Arkansas Razorbacks go to 8-3. They'll play Hawaii, then go to the Liberty Bowl and play the Georgia Bulldogs. And down the road, that's what the Lobos would like to be headed for. Some type of a bowl game, you know. <laughs> The Lobos came into this wanting to play respectable. The seniors wanted to do a good job, be remembered for something. And uh, for a while there, for a long while, for three quarters, it was very much in doubt who would win this game. A lot of people didn't give the Lobos any chance whatsoever, but I thought they made a fine account of themselves. Well, they let it at one time, but then it got away. The bigger athletes and James Rouse got back into the game, and that was it. Gary enjoyed it. It was a fun season for us, but regretfully for the Lobos, they couldn't win a football game, and everybody thought they'd struggle, but I don't thought anybody thought they'd go without a win. No, I don't, I don't think so either. They were hit by the injury bug, more like a plague for them, but uh, they struggled through it. Very few games when they weren't in it late mostly late in the season, but this one even still, they finished on a fine note, I think. There's your final score. Jim Lawwell here on behalf of Gary Ness saying so long from Little Rock. Here's hoping that today and every day your team's a winner, and remember, it's Lobo basketball at 10 Monday night when the Lobos take on the Western New Mexico University Mustangs. So long, everybody.